the first book of the Kings. Chapter 1 And King David waxed eld, and had full many days of age. And when he was covered with clothes, he was not made hot. Therefore his servants said to him, Seek we to our lord the king a young waxing virgin, and stand she before the king, and nurse she him, and sleep in his bosom, and make hot our lord the king. Therefore they sought a young waxing virgin, fair in all the coasts of Israel, and they found Abishag of Shunem, and they brought her to the king. And the damsel was full fair, and she slept with the king, and ministered to him, for sooth the king knew not her fleshly. And Adonijah, the son of Haggath, was raised up, and said, I shall reign. And he made to him a chariot, and knights, and fifty men, that ran before him. Neither David, his father, reproved him any time, nor said, Why hast thou done this? But also he was full fair, the second child after Absalom. And his word was with Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and with Abiathar, priest, that helped the parts of Adonijah. But Zadok, the priest, and Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, and Nathan, the prophet, and Shimei, and Cherethites and Pelethites, and all the strength of the host of David, were not with Adonijah. Therefore when rams were offered, and calves, and all fat things, beside the stone Zoheleth, that was nigh the well of Rogel, Adonijah called all his brethren, the sons of the king, and all the men of Judah, servants of the king. Soothly he called not Nathan, the prophet, and Beniah, and all the strong men, and Solomon, his brother. And Sir Nathan said to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, Whether thou hast heard, that Adonijah, the son of Haggath, hath reigned, and our Lord David knoweth not this. Now therefore come thou, take thou counsel of me, and save thy life, and of Solomon, thy son. Go thou, and enter to King David, and say thou to him, Whether not thou, my lord the king, hast sworn to me, thine handmaid, and saidest, that Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit in my throne. Why therefore reigneth Adonijah? And yet while thou shalt speak there with the king, I shall come after thee, and fulfill thy words. Therefore Bathsheba entered to the king in the closet. And the king was full eld, and Abishag of Shunem ministered to him. And Bathsheba bowed herself, and worshipped the king. To whom the king said, What wilt thou to thee? And she answered, and said, My lord the king, thou hast sworn to thine handmaid by thy lord God, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit in my throne. And lo, Adonijah hath reigned now, while thou, my lord the king, knowest not, he hath slain oxen, and all fat things, and full many rams, and he hath called all the sons of the king, also Abiathar priest, and Joab, the prince of the chivalry, but he called not Solomon, thy servant. Nevertheless, my lord the king, the eyes of all Israel behold into thee, that thou show to them, who oughteth to sit in thy throne, my lord the king, after thee. And it shall be, when my lord the king hath slept with his fathers, I and my son Solomon shall be sinners, that is, Adonijah shall put on us crimes, to deprive us from life. While she spake yet with the king, Nathan, the prophet, came. And they told to the king, and said, Nathan, the prophet, is present. And when he had entered in the sight of the king, and had worshipped him lowly to the earth, Nathan said, My lord the king, saidest thou, Adonijah reign after me, and sit he on my throne. For he came down today, and offered oxen, and fat things, and full many weathers. And he called all the sons of the king, and also Abiathar, priest. And when they ate, and drank before him, and said, King Adonijah live. He called not me, thy servant, and Zadok, the priest, and Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, and Solomon, thy son. Whether this word went out from my lord the king, and thou showedest not to me, thy servant, who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. And king David answered, and said, Call ye Bathsheba to me. And when she had entered before the king, and had stood before him, the king swore, and said, The Lord liveth, that hath delivered my life from all anguish. For as I swore to thee by the Lord God of Israel, and said, Solomon, thy son, shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne for me, so I shall do today. And Bathsheba, with her cheer bowed down into the earth, worshipped the king, 
and said, My Lord King David live without end. And King David said, Call ye Zadok, the priest, to me, and Nathan, the prophet, and Beniah, the son of Jehoiada. And when they had entered before the king, the king said to them, Take with you the servants of your lord, and put ye my son Solomon upon my mule, and lead ye him into Gihon. And Zadok, the priest, and Nathan, the prophet, anoint him into king upon Israel and Judah, and ye shall sing with a trump, and ye shall say, Live King Solomon. Ye shall go up after him, and ye shall come to Jerusalem, and he shall sit upon my throne, and he shall reign for me, and I shall command to him, that he be duke on Israel and on Judah. And Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, answered to the king, and said, Amen. So speak the Lord God of my lord the king. As the Lord was with my lord the king, so be he with Solomon, and make ye the throne of Solomon higher than the throne of my lord king David. Then Zadok, the priest, went down, and Nathan, the prophet, and Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, and Cherethites, and Pelethites. And they putted Solomon upon the mule of David, the king, and they brought him into Gihon. And Zadok, the priest, took an horn of oil of the tabernacle, and anointed Solomon. And they sang with a clarion. And all the people said, Live King Solomon. And all the multitude went up after him, and the people of men singing with pipes, and being glad with great joy. And the earth sounded of the cry of them. And Adonijah heard, and all that were called of him to the feast. And then the feast was ended. But also Joab said, When the voice of the trump was heard, what will it to itself the cry of the city making noise? Yet while he spake, Jonathan, the son of Abiatha, the priest, came. To whom Adonijah said, Enter thou, for thou art a strong man, and telling good things. And Jonathan answered to Adonijah, Nay, for our lord King David hath ordained Solomon king. And David hath sent with Solomon Zadok, the priest, and Nathan, the prophet, and Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, and Cherethites, and Pelethites. And they have put Solomon upon the mule of the king. And Zadok, the priest, and Nathan, the prophet, have anointed him king in Gihon. And they came down from thence being glad, and the city sounded. This is the voice that ye heard. But also Solomon sitteth on the throne of realm. And the servants of the king have entered, and have blessed our lord king David, and said, God make large the name of Solomon above thy name and make great his throne above thy throne. And King David worshipped in his bed. And furthermore he spake these things, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, that hath given today a sitter in my throne, while mine eyes see. Therefore all that were called of Adonijah to the feast, were afeared, and rose up, and each man went into his way. And Adonijah dreaded Solomon, and rose up, and went into the tabernacle of the Lord, and he held the horn, or corner, of the altar. And they told to Solomon, and said, Lo, Adonijah dreadeth the king Solomon, and he holdeth the horn, or corner, of the altar, and said, King Solomon swear to me today, that he shall not slay his servant with sword. And Solomon said, If he is a good man, soothly not an hair of him shall fall into the earth, but if evil be found in him, he shall die. Therefore King Solomon sent, and led out Adonijah from the altar, and he entered, and worshipped King Solomon. And Solomon said to him, Go into thine house. Chapter 2 Forsooth the days of David nigh, that he should die. And he commanded to Solomon, his son, and said, Lo! I enter into the way of all earth. Be thou strengthened, and be thou a strong man. And keep thou the keepings and the behests of thy Lord God, that thou go in his ways, and keep his ceremonies, and his behests, and his dooms, and witnessings, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou understand all things which thou doest, and whither ever thou shalt turn thee. That the Lord confirm his words, which the Lord spake of me, and said, If thy sons keep my ways, and go before me in truth, in all their heart, and in all their soul, a man shall not be taken away of thee from the throne of Israel. Also thou knowest what things Joab, the son of Zeruiah, did to me, what things he did to two princes of the host of Israel, to Abner, the son of Enna, and to Amasa, the son of Jether, which he killed, and shedded the blood of battle in peace, and putted the blood of battle in his girdle, that was about his loins, and in his shoe, that was in his feet. 
therefore thou shalt do by thy wisdom, and thou shalt not lead forth his hoariness peaceably to hells, either sepulchre. But also thou shalt yield grace to the sons of Barzillai of Gilead, and they shall be eating in thy board. For they met me, when I fled from the face of Absalom, thy brother. Also thou hast with thee Shimei, the son of Gera, the son of Benjamin, of Bahurim, the which Shimei cursed me by the worst cursing, when I went to the defensible places. But for thy he came down to me into my meeting, when I passed Jordan, and I swore to him by the Lord, and said, I shall not slay thee with sword, do not thou suffer him to be unpunished. Forsooth thou art a wise man, and thou shalt know what thou shalt do to him, and thou shalt lead forth his whore hairs with blood to hells. And David slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David. And the days, in which David reigned upon Israel, be forty years. In Hebron he reigned seven years, and in Jerusalem three and thirty years. Forsooth Solomon sat upon the throne of David, his father, and his realm was made steadfast greatly. And Adonijah, the son of Haggath, entered to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon. And she said to him, Whether thine entering is peaceable? And he answered, It is peaceable. And he added, A word of me is to thee. And she said, Speak thou. And he said, Thou knowest that the realm was mine, and all Israel purposed to make me into king to them. But the realm is translated, and is made my brother's, for of the Lord it is ordained to him. Now therefore I pray of thee one asking, Shame thou not my face. And she said to him, Speak thou. And he said, I pray, that thou say to Solomon the king, for he may not deny anything to thee, that he give me Abishag of Shunem to wife. And Bathsheba said, Well, I shall speak for thee to the king. Therefore Bathsheba came to King Solomon, to speak to him for Adonijah. And the king rose against the coming of her, and worshipped her, and sat on his throne. And a throne was set to the mother of the king, and she sat at his right side. And she said to him, I pray of thee one little asking. Shame thou not my face. And the king said to her, My mother, ask thou. For it is not leaveful that I turn away thy face. And she said, Abishag of Shunem be given wife to Adonijah, thy brother. And King Solomon answered, and said to his mother, Why askest thou Abishag of Shunem to Adonijah? Ask thou to him also the realm. Certainly he is mine elder brother, and he hath Abiathar, priest, and Joab, the son of Zeruiah. Therefore King Solomon swore by the Lord, and said, God do to me these things, and add these things too, for Adonijah hath spoken this word against his life. And now the Lord liveth, that hath confirmed me, and hath set me on the throne of my father, and that hath made to me an house, as he spake, for Adonijah shall be slain today. And King Solomon sent by the hand of Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, and Beniah slew Adonijah, and he was dead. Also the king said to Abiathar, the priest, Go thou into Anathoth, to thy field, and soothly thou art a man of death, that is, worthy of death, for conspiring against me, and David, my father. But today I shall not slay thee, for thou bearest the ark of the Lord God before David, my father, and thou sufferedest travail in all things, in which my father travailed. Therefore Solomon putted out Abiathar, that he should not be priest of the Lord, that the word of the Lord were filled, which he spake on the house of Eli in Shiloh. And a messenger came to Solomon, and said that Joab had bowed after Adonijah, and that he had not bowed after Solomon. Therefore Joab fled into the tabernacle of the Lord, and took the horn of the altar. And it was told to King Solomon, that Joab had fled into the tabernacle of the Lord, and was beside the altar. And Solomon sent Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, and said, Go thou, and slay him. And Beniah came to the tabernacle of the Lord, and said to Joab, The king saith these things, Go thou out. And he said, I shall not go out, but I shall die here. Beniah told the word to the king, and said, Joab spake these things, and answered these things to me. And the king said to Beniah, Do thou as he hath spoken, and slay thou him, and bury him. And thou shalt remove the innocent blood, that was shed out of Joab, from me, and from the house of my father. And the Lord yield on his head his blood, for he killed two just men, and better than himself, and he killed them by sword, while David, my father, 
knew not, Abner the son of Enna, the prince of the chivalry of Israel, and Amasa, the son of Jether, the prince of the host of Judah. And the blood of them shall turn again into the head of Joab, and into the head of his seed without end. But peace be of the Lord till into without end to David, and to his seed, and to the house, and throne of him. Therefore Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, went up, and assailed Joab, and killed him. And Joab was buried in his house in desert. And the king ordained Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, upon the host for Joab. And the king put Zadok the priest for Abiathar. Also the king sent, and called Shimei, and said to him, Build to thee an house in Jerusalem, and dwell thou there, and thou shalt not go out from thence hither and thither. For in whatever day thou goest out, and passest the strand of Kidron, know thou thee worthy to be slain. Thy blood shall be on thine head. And Shimei said to the king, The word of the king is good. As my lord the king spake, so thy servant shall do. And so Shimei dwelled in Jerusalem many days. But it was done after three years, that the servants of Shimei fled to Achish, the son of Marcher, king of Gath. And it was told to Shimei, that his servants had gone into Gath. And Shimei rose up, and saddled his ass, and went to Achish, into Gath, to seek his servants, and he brought them again from Gath. And it was told to King Solomon, that Shimei had gone to Gath from Jerusalem, and had come again. And Solomon sent, and called him, and said to him, Whether I witness not to thee by the Lord, and before said to thee, In whatever day thou shalt go out hither and thither, know thou that thou shalt die. And thou answeredest to me, The word is good, which I heard. Why therefore keptest thou not the oath of the Lord, and the commandment which I commanded to thee? And the king said to Shimei, Thou knowest all the evil, of which thine heart is guilty to thee, which evil thou didst to my father, the Lord hath yielded thy malice into thine head. And King Solomon shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be stable before the Lord till into without end. Therefore the king commanded to Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, and he assailed Shimei, and smote him, and he was dead. Therefore the realm was confirmed into the hands of Solomon. Chapter 3 And by affinity, either alliance, he was joined to Pharaoh, king of Egypt. For he took the daughter of Pharaoh, and brought into the city of David, till he filled building his house, and the house of the Lord, and the wall of Jerusalem by compass. Nevertheless the people offered in high places. For the temple was not builded to the name of the Lord till into that day. Soothly Solomon loved the Lord, and went in the behests of David, his father, except that Solomon offered in high places and burnt incense. And so Solomon went into Gibeon, to offer there. For that was the most high place. Solomon offered upon that altar in Gibeon a thousand offerings into burnt sacrifice. Soothly the Lord appeared to Solomon by sleep in the night, and said, Ask thou that, that thou wilt, that I give it to thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast done great mercy with thy servant David, my father, as he went in thy sight, in truth, and right wiseness, and in rightful heart with thee. Thou hast kept to him thy great mercy, and hast given to him a son, sitting on his throne, as it is today. And now, Lord God, thou hast made thy servant to reign for David, my father. Forsooth I am a little child, and not knowing mine outgoing and mine incoming. And thy servant is in the midst of the people, which thou hast chosen, of people without number, that may not be numbered and reckoned, for multitude. Therefore thou shalt give to thy servant in heart able to be taught, that is, enlightened of thee, that he may deem thy people, and judge betwixt good and evil, for who may deem this people, thy people, this much people. Therefore the word pleased before the Lord, that Solomon had asked such a thing. And the Lord said to Solomon, For thou askedest this word, and askedest not to thee many days, neither riches, neither the lives of thine enemies, but thou askedest to thee wisdom to deem doom, lo. I have done to thee after thy words, and I have given to thee a wise heart and an understanding, in so much that no man before thee was like thee, neither shall rise after thee. But also I have given to thee these things, which thou askedest not, that is, riches, and glory, that no man be like thee in kings in all times afterward. Forsooth if thou goest in my ways, and keepest my biddings and commandments, 
as thy father went in him, I shall make thy days long. Therefore Solomon waked, and understood what the Sweven was. And when he had come to Jerusalem, he stood before the ark of bond of peace of the Lord. And he offered burnt sacrifices, and made peaceable sacrifices, and a great feast to all his household, to all his menials. Then two women whores came to the king, and stood before him. Of which one said, My lord, I beseech, I and this woman dwelled in one house, and I childed at her in a couch. And in the third day after that I had childed, also this woman childed. And we were together in the house, and none other was with us in the house, except us twain. And the son of this woman was dead in the night, for she slept, and overlay him. And she rose up in the fourth part of the night in silence, and took my son from the side of me, thine handmaid sleeping, and she laid it in her bosom, and she putted in my bosom her son, that was dead. And when I had risen early, to give milk to my son, he appeared dead, whom I beheld more diligently by clear light, and I perceived, that he was not mine, whom I had engendered. The Tother woman answered, It is not as thou sayest, but thy son is dead, forsooth my son liveth. The contrary, she said, Thou liest, for my son liveth, and thy son is dead. And by this manner they strove before the king. Then the king said, This woman saith, My son liveth, and thy son is dead. And this woman answereth, Nay, but thy son is dead, and my son liveth. Therefore the king said, Bring ye to me a sword. And when they had brought a sword before the king, he said, Part ye the quick young child in two parts, and give ye the half part to the one, and the half part to the tother. And the woman, whose son was quick, said to the king, for her entrails were moved on her son, Lord, I beseech, give ye to her the quick child, and do not ye slay him. The contrary, she said, be he neither to me, neither to thee, but be he parted. The king answered, and said, give ye to this woman the young child quick, and be he not slain. Forsooth this is his mother. Therefore all Israel heard the doom, which the king had deemed, and they dreaded the king, and saw, that the wisdom of God was in him, to make doom. Chapter 4 Forsooth King Solomon was reigning on all Israel. And these were the princes which he had, Azariah, the son of Zadok, the priest, Elahorf, and Ahia, sons of Shisha, were scribes, Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilad, was chancellor, Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, was prince upon the host, and Zadok and Abiathar were priests. Azariah, the son of Nathan, was upon him that stood nigh the king. Zabad, the son of Nathan, was priest, a friend of the king. And Ahisha was steward of the house, and Adoniram, the son of Abda, was upon the tributes. Forsooth Solomon had twelve prefects, either chief ministers, on all Israel, that gave lifeload to the king, and to his house, soothly by each month by itself in the year, each prefect by himself ministered necessaries. And these be the names of them, Ben-Hur, in the hill of Ephraim, ben Deca in Machaz, and in Shalbam, and in Beth-Shemesh, and in Elon, and in Bethanan, ben Hezd, in Arubath, and Socho, and all the land of Hepha, was his, ben Abinadab, whose was all Napheth, had Dor Tapheth, the daughter of Solomon, to wife. Barna, the son of Ahilad, governed Tarnak, and Megiddo, and all Bethshin, which is beside Zartana, under Jezreel, from Bethshin unto Abelmehola, even against Jonium. Ben Geber, in Ramoth of Gilead, had Havath Jair, of the son of Manasseh, in Gilead. He was sovereign in all the country of Argob, which is in Bashan, to sixty great cities and walled, that had brazen locks. Ahinadab, the son of Ido, was sovereign in Mahanaim. Ahimaz was in Naphtali, but also he had Basmuth, the daughter of Solomon, in wedlock. Barna, the son of Hushai, was in Asher, and in Aleth. Jehoshaphat, the son of Perua, was in Isaacah. Shimei, the son of Ella, was in Benjamin. Geba, the son of Uri, was in the land of Gilead, and in the land of Sihon, king of Amorites, and of Og, king of Bashan, and upon all things that were in that land. Judah and Israel were unnumberable, as the sand of the sea in multitude, eating, and drinking, and being glad. Forsooth Solomon was in his lordship, and had all the realms, as from the flood of the land of Philistines, 
unto the last part of Egypt, of men offering gifts, that is, tributes, to him, and serving to him, in all the days of his life. Forsooth the meat of Solomon was by each day, thirty cores of clean flour of wheat, and sixty cores of meal, ten fat oxen, and twenty oxen of the pasture, and an hundred weathers, besides hunting of hearts, of goats, and of bugles, and of birds made fat. For he held all the country that was beyond the flood, as from Tifsa unto Azza, and all the kings of those countries, and he had peace by each part in compass. And Judah and Israel dwelled without any dread, each man under his vine, and under his fig tree, from Dan unto Beersheba, in all the days of Solomon. And Solomon had forty thousand cratches of horses for chariots, and twelve thousand of road horses, and the foresaid prefects, the chief masters of the king, nourished those horses. But also with great busyness they gave necessaries to the board of King Solomon, in their time. Also they brought barley, and forage of horses and of work beasts, into the place where the king was, after it was ordained to them. Also God gave to Solomon wisdom, and prudence full much, and largeness of heart, as the sand that is in the brink of the sea. And the wisdom of Solomon passed the wisdom of all east men, and Egyptians. And he was wiser than all men. He was wiser than Ethan Ezrahit, and than Heman, and than Chalcol, and than Dada, the sons of Mahol. And he was named among all folks by compass. And Solomon spake three thousand parables, and his songs were a thousand and five. And he disputed of trees, from a cedar which is in Lebanon, till to the hyssop that goeth out of the wall. He disputed of work beasts, and birds, and of creeping beasts, and of fishes. And they came from all peoples to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and from all the kings of earth, that heard his wisdom. Chapter 5 Also Hiram, king of Tyre, sent his servants to Solomon. For he heard that they had anointed him king for his father. For Hiram was friend of David in all time. And also Solomon sent to Hiram, and said, Thou knowest the will of David, my father, and for he might not build an house to the name of his God, for battles nighing by compass, till the Lord gave them under the step of his feet. But now my Lord God hath given rest to me by compass, and none adversary is, neither evil assailing. Wherefore I think to build a temple to the name of my Lord God, as God spake to David, my father, and said, Thy son, whom I shall give to thee for thee upon thy throne, he shall build an house to my name. Therefore command thou, that thy servants hew down to me cedars of the Lebanon, and my servants be with thy servants, and I shall give to thee the meed of thy servants, whatever thou shalt ask, for thou knowest, that in my people is not a man that can hew trees, as Sidonians can, as the men of Sidon. Therefore when Hiram had heard the words of Solomon, he was full glad, and said, Blessed be the Lord God today, that hath given to David the son most wise upon this people full much. And Hiram sent to Solomon, and said, I have heard whatever things thou sentest to me, I shall do all thy will, in trees of cedars, and in trees of box. My servants shall put down those trees from the Lebanon to the sea, and I shall array those trees in ships in the sea, unto the place that thou shalt signify to me, and I shall direct those there, that thou take those, and thou shalt give necessaries to me, that meat be given to mine house. And so Hiram gave to Solomon cedar trees, and box trees, by all his will. And Solomon gave to Hiram twenty thousand cores of wheat, into meat to his house, and twenty cores of purest oil. Solomon gave these things to Hiram by all years. Also the Lord gave wisdom to Solomon, as he spake to him. And peace was betwixt Hiram and Solomon, and both they smote together bond of peace. And King Solomon chose workmen of all Israel and the sum was thirty thousand of men. And Solomon sent them into the Lebanon, ten thousand by each month by wiles, so that in two months by wiles they were in their houses, and Adoniram was on such a sum. And so seventy thousand of them, that bear burdens, were to Solomon, and fourscore thousand of masons in the hill, without the sovereigns, that were masters of all the works, by the number of three thousand and three hundred, commanding to the people, and to them that made work. And the king commanded, that they should take great stones, and precious stones, heavy stones, into the foundament of the temple, and that they should make those square, which stones the masons of Solomon and the masons of Hiram hewed. 
and men of Byblos made ready trees and stones to the house to be builded. Chapter 6 for sooth it was done in the four hundred and fourscore year of the going out of the sons of Israel from the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of the realm of Solomon, in the month Ziph, that is, the second month of the fourth year of the realm of Solomon on Israel, he began to build an house to the Lord. For sooth the house which King Solomon builded to the Lord, had sixty cubits in length, and twenty cubits in breadth, and thirty cubits in height. And a porch was before the temple of twenty cubits of length, by the measure of the breadth of the temple, and the porch had ten cubits of breadth, before the face of the temple. And Solomon made in the temple narrow windows without fifth and large within. And he builded on the wall of the temple, buildings of boards by compass, in the walls of the house, by compass of the temple, and of God's answering place, and he made sides in the compass. The building of boards, that was under, had five cubits of breadth and the middle building of boards was of six cubits of breadth, and the third building of boards was having seven cubits of breadth. And he put beams in the house by compass without fifth, that those cleaved not to the walls of the temple. And when the house was builded, it was built of perfect hewn stones, and hammer, and axe, and all thing made of iron, were not heard in the house, while it was in building. The door of the middle side was in the wall of the right half of the house, and by a vice men went up into the middle solar, and from the middle solar into the third solar. And Solomon builded the house, and ended it. And Solomon covered the house with couples of cedar, and he builded a building of boards over all the house, by five cubits of height, and covered the house with cedar wood. And the word of the Lord was made to Solomon, and said, This is the house, which thou buildest. If thou goest in my behests, and doest my dooms, and keepest all my commandments, and goest by those, I shall make steadfast my word to thee, which word I spake to David, thy father, and I shall dwell in the midst of the sons of Israel, and I shall not forsake my people Israel. Therefore Solomon builded the house, and ended it. And he builded the walls of the house within with boards of cedar, from the pavement of the house unto the highness of the wall, and unto the couples. And he covered them with wood of cedar within and he covered the pavement of the house with boards of box. And he builded a wall of boards of cedar of twenty cubits at the hinder part of the temple, from the pavement unto the higher parts, and he made the inner house of God's answering place into the holy of holy things. And that temple before the doors of God's answering place was of forty cubits. And all the house within was clothed with cedar, and had his smoothnesses, and his joinings made subtly, and gravings appearing above, all things were clothed with boards of cedar, and utterly a stone might not appear in the wall. And Solomon made God's answering place in the midst of the house, in the inner part, that he should set there the ark of bond of peace of the Lord. And God's answering place had twenty cubits of length, and twenty cubits of breadth, and twenty cubits of height, and he covered, and clothed it with purest gold, but also he clothed the altar with cedar. Also he covered with purest gold the house before God's answering place, or the oracle, and he fastened the plates with golden nails. Nothing was in the temple that was not covered with gold, but also he covered with gold all the altar of God's answering place. And he made in God's answering place two cherubims of the trees of olives, of ten cubits of height. One wing of cherub was of five cubits, and the tother wing of cherub was of five cubits, that is, having ten cubits from the highness of the one wing till to the highness of the tother wing. And the second cherub was of ten cubits in even measure. And one work was in the two cherubims, that is, one cherub had the height of ten cubits, and in like manner the tother cherub. And he set cherubims in the midst of the inner temple. And the cherubims held forth their wings, and one wing touched the one wall, and the wing of the second cherub touched the tother wall and the other wings in the middle part of the temple touched themselves together. And he covered the cherubims with gold, and all the walls of the temple by compass about, and he grabbed them with diverse gravings and smoothness, and he made in those walls cherubims and palms, and diverse paintures, as standing forth and going out of the wall. But also he covered with gold the pavement of the house, within and without fifth. And in the entering of God's answering place he made two little doors of the trees of olives and he made posts of five corners, and two doors of the trees of olives, 
and he graved in those the painture of cherubims, and the likenesses of palms, and gravings above standing forth greatly, and he covered those with gold, and he covered as well the cherubims, as palms, and other things, with gold. And in the entering of the temple he made posts four cornered of trees of olives, and he made two doors of the trees of box, each against other, and ever either door was double, and it was opened holding itself together. And he grabbed cherubims, and palms, and gravings appearing greatly, and he covered all things with golden plates, by square work at rule. And he builded a large street, or an alley, within, by three orders of stones made fair, and by one order of wood of cedar. The house of the Lord was founded in the fourth year of the realm of Solomon, in the month Ziph, and the house was made perfect, or ended, in all his work, and in all his vessels, either pertinences, in the eleventh year, in the month Bull, that is the eighth month, and he builded that house in seven years. Chapter 7 Forsooth Solomon builded his own house in thirteen years, and brought it till to perfection, or perfect end. He builded in house of the forest, of Lebanon, of an hundred cubits of length, and of fifty cubits of breadth, and of thirty cubits of height, and he builded four alleys betwixt the pillars of cedars, for he had hewn down trees of cedars into pillars. And he clothed all the chamber with walls of cedar, the which chamber was sustained, or borne up, with five and forty pillars. And one order had fifteen pillars, set against themselves together, and beholding themselves each even against other by even space betwixt the pillars, and on the pillars were four square posts, even in all things. And he made a porch of pillars of fifty cubits of length, and of thirty cubits of breadth, and he made another porch in the face of the greater porch, and he made pillars, and pommels on the pillars. Also he made a porch of the king's seat, in which the seat of doom was, and he covered it with wood of cedar, from the pavement unto the highness. And a little house, in which he sat to deem, was in the middle porch, by like work. Also Solomon made an house to the daughter of Pharaoh, whom he had wedded, by such work, by what manner work he made and this porch. He made all things of precious stones, that were sawed at a rule and measure, both within and without forth, from the fundament unto the highness of walls, and within and till to the great street, either court. And the fundaments were of precious stones, great stones of ten, either of eight cubits, and precious stones hewn of even measure were above, in like manner and of cedar. And the greater court, either void space, was round, of three orders of hewn stones, and of one order of hewn cedar beams, also and in the inner large street of the house of the Lord, and in the porch of the house of the Lord. Also King Solomon sent, and brought from Tyre, Hiram, the son of a woman widow, of the lineage of Naphtali, of the father of a man of Tyre, a craftsman of brass, and full of wisdom, and understanding, and doctrine, or teaching, to make all work of brass. And when he had come to King Solomon, he made all his work. And he made two pillars of brass, one pillar of eighteen cubits of height, and a line of twelve cubits compassed ever either pillar. Also he made two pommels, molten of brass, which were set on the heads of the pillars, one pommel of five cubits of height, and the totha pommel of five cubits of height, and by the manner of a net, and of chains knit together to themselves, by wonderful work. Ever either pommel of the pillars was molten. Seven works like nets of orders were in one pommel, and seven works like nets in the totha pommel. And he made perfectly the pillars, and two orders about all the works like nets, that those should cover the pommels, which were upon the highness of pomegranates, in the same manner he did also to the second pommel. And the pommels, that were upon the heads of the pillars in the porch, were made as by work of lily, of four cubits. And again other pommels in the highness of pillars above, by the measure of the pillar, set against the works like nets, and two hundred orders of pomegranates were in the compass of the second pommel. And he set the two pillars in the porch of the temple. And when he had set the right half pillar, he called it by name Jachin, that is, steadfast. In like manner he raised up the second pillar, and he called the name there of Boaz, that is, strength. And he set upon the heads of the pillars a work by the manner of a lily, and the work of the pillars was made perfect. Also he made a molten sea, that is, a washing vessel for priests, round in compass, of ten cubits from brink to brink. The highness thereof was of five cubits, 
and a cord of 30 cubits went about it by compass. And the engraving under the brink compassed it, and compassed the sea by 10 cubits, and it came about the sea by 10 cubits. Twain orders of gravings containing some stories were molten, and stood upon 12 oxen, of which oxen 3 beheld to the north, and 3 to the west, and 3 to the south, and 3 to the east. And the sea was above upon those oxen, of which all the hinder things were hid within. And the thickness of the sea was of four fingers, or a palm, and the brink thereof was as the brink of a cup, and as the leaf of a lily crooked again. The sea contained two thousand baths, that is, three thousand metrics. And he made ten brazen foundaments, each foundament of four cubits of length, and of four cubits of breadth, and of three cubits of highness. And that work of the foundaments was raised betwixt, and gravings were between the jointures. And between the little crowns and the circles were lions, oxen, and cherubims, and in the jointures in like manner above, and under the lions and the oxen were as reins of bridles of brass hanging down. And by each foundament were four wheels, and brazen axle trees, and by four parts were as little shoulderings under the washing vessel, the shoulderings, that is, short pillars to sustain the washing vessel, molten, and beholding against themselves together. And the mouth of the washing vessel within was in the highness of the head, and that, that appeared without fifth, was of one cubit, and it was all round, and had altogether one cubit and an half, and diverse gravings were in the corners of pillars, and the middle pillar between was square, not round. And the four wheels, which were by four corners of the foundament, cleaved together to themselves under the foundament. One wheel had one cubit and an half of height. And the wheels were such, which manner wheels be wont to be made in a chariot, and the axle trees, and the nave stocks, and the spokes, and fellows, and the dowels of those wheels, all things were molten. For also the four little shoulderings, by all the corners of one foundament, were joined together, and molten of that foundament, that is, were molten together with that foundament, and made one body. And in the highness of the foundament was a roundness, of one cubit and an half, so made craftily, that the washing vessel might be set above, having his portrayings, and diverse gravings of itself. Also he graved in those walls, that were of brass, and in the corners, cherubims, and lions, and palms, as by the likeness of a man standing, that those seemed not graven, but put to by compass. By this manner he made ten foundaments, by one melting out, and one measure, and like engraving. Also he made ten washing vessels of brass, one washing vessel took, forty baths, and it was of four cubits, and he put each washing vessel by itself by each foundament by itself, that is, ten. And he made ten foundaments, five at the right half of the temple, and five at the left half. And he set the sea at the right half of the temple, against the east, at the south. Also Hiram made cauldrons, and pans, and wine vessels. And he made perfectly all the work of King Solomon in the temple of the Lord. He made two pillars, and two cords of the pommels, that is, circles compassing the pommels, at the manner of cords, upon the pommels of the pillars, and two works like nets, that those should cover the two cords, that were upon the heads of the pillars. And he made pomegranates four hundred in two works like nets, and two orders of pomegranates in each work like a net, to cover the cords of the pommels, that were on the heads of pillars. And he made ten foundaments, and ten washing vessels on the foundaments, and one sea, and twelve oxen under the sea, and cauldrons, and pans, and wine vessels. All the vessels, which Hiram made to King Solomon in the house of the Lord, were of Latin. And the king melted out those vessels in the field country of Jordan, in clay land, betwixt Succoth and Zarthan. And Solomon set it all the vessels. But for the great multitude, no weight was of the brass. And Solomon made all the vessels in the house of the Lord. Soothly he made the golden altar, that is, the altar of incense, that was within the temple, and the golden board, upon which the loaves of setting forth were set. And he made of most pure gold golden candlesticks, five at the right half, and five at the left half, against God's answering place. And he made as the flowers of a lily, and golden lanterns above, and golden tongs, and pots, and hooks, and vials, and mortars, and senses of purest gold, and the hinges of the doors of the inner house of the holy of holy things, and of the doors of the house of the temple, 
were of gold. And Solomon performed all the work that he made in the house of the Lord. And he brought in the things which David, his father, had hallowed, silver, and gold, and vessels. And he kept those in the treasures of the house of the Lord. Chapter 8 Then all the greater men in birth in Israel, with princes of the lineages, and the dukes of families of the sons of Israel, were gathered to King Solomon, into Jerusalem, that they should bear the ark of bond of peace of the Lord from the city of David, that is, from Zion. And all Israel came together in the month Ethanim, that is September, in the solemn day, which is the seventh month. And all the eld men of Israel came, and the priests took the ark, and they bare the ark of the Lord, and the tabernacle of bond of peace, and all the vessels of the sanctuary, that were in the tabernacle, and the priests and deacons bare those. And King Solomon, and all the multitude of Israel, that came together to him, went with him before the ark, and they offered sheep and oxen, without guessing and number. And priests brought the ark of bond of peace of the Lord into his place, into God's answering place of the temple, into the holy of holy things, under the wings of the cherubims. And the cherubims spreaded forth their wings over the place of the ark, and they covered the ark, and the bars thereof above. And when the bars stood forth, and the highness of those appeared without the sanctuary, before God's answering place, those bars appeared no further without fifth, the which bars also were there unto this present day. And in the ark was none other thing, no but two tables of stone, which Moses in Horeb had put in the ark, when the Lord made bond of peace with the sons of Israel, when they went out of the land of Egypt. And it was done when the priests had gone out of the sanctuary, a cloud filled the house of the Lord, and the priests might not stand and minister, for the cloud. For why the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon said, The Lord said, that he would dwell in a cloud, in a mist. I building have builded in house into thy dwelling place, into thy most steadfast throne without end. And the king turned his face, and blessed all the church in Israel, for all the church of Israel stood. And Solomon said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, that spake with his mouth to David, my father, and performed in his hands, and said, From the day in which I led my people Israel out of Egypt, I chose not a city of all the lineages of Israel, that in house should be builded, and my name should be there. But I chose David, that he should be over my people Israel. And David, my father, would have builded in house to the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said to David, my father, that thou thoughtest in thine heart to build an house to my name, thou didst well, treating this same thing in thy soul. Nevertheless thou shalt not build an house to me, but thy son, that shall go out of thy reins, he shall build an house to my name. The Lord hath now confirmed his word, that he spake. And I stood for David, my father, and I sat upon the throne of Israel, as the Lord spake. And I have builded an house to the name of the Lord God of Israel. And I have ordained there a place of the ark, in which the ark of the bond of peace of the Lord is, which he smote with our fathers, when they went out of the land of Egypt. And Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord, in the sight of the church of Israel, and he held forth his hands against heaven, and said, Lord God of Israel, no God in heaven above, neither on earth beneath, is like thee, which keepest covenant and mercy to thy servants, that go before thee in all their heart and thou keepest to David, my father, thy servant, those things which thou hast spoken to him. By mouth thou hast spoken, and by hands thou hast fulfilled, as this day proveth. Now therefore, Lord God of Israel, keep thou to thy servant David, my father, those things which thou spackest to him, and saidest, A man of thee shall not be taken away before me, which man shall sit on the throne of Israel, so nevertheless if thy sons keep thy way, that they go before me, as thou wentest in my sight. And now, Lord God of Israel, thy words be made steadfast, which thou spackest to thy servant David, my father. Therefore whether it is to guess, that God dwelleth verily on earth, for if heaven, and heaven of heavens be not able to take thee, how much more this house, that I have builded to thee. But, my Lord God, behold thou to the prayer of thy servant, and to the beseechings of him. Hear thou the hymn, either praising, and prayer, which thy servant prayeth before thee today. That thine eyes be opened on this house by night and day, on the house of which thou saidest, 
my name shall be there. That thou hear the prayer, which thy servant prayeth to thee in this place. That thou hear the beseeching of thy servant, and of thy people Israel. Whatever thing he prayeth in this place, and hear thou in the place of thy dwelling in heaven. And when thou hast heard, thou shalt be merciful. If a man sinneth against a man, and hath any oath, by which he is holden bound, and cometh for the oath into thine house, before thine altar, thou shalt hear in heaven, and thou shalt do, and thou shalt deem thy servants, and thou shalt condemn the wicked man, and shalt yield his way on his head, and thou shalt justify the just man, and shalt yield to him after his rightfulness. If thy people Israel fleeth his enemies, for he shall do sin to thee, and they do penance, or repent their sin, and acknowledge to thy great name, and come, and worship, and beseech thee in this house, hear thou in heaven, and forgive thou the sin of thy people, and thou shalt lead him again into the land, which thou hast given to the fathers of them. If heaven is closed, and reigneth not for the sins of them, and they pray in this place, and do penance to thy name, and be converted, or altogether turned, from their sins for their torment, hear thou them in heaven, and forgive thou the sins of thy servants, and of thy people Israel, and show thou to them a good way, by which they shall go, and give thou rain to them upon the land, which thou hast given to them into possession. If hunger riseth in the land, either pestilence is, either corrupt air is, either rust, either locust, either mildew, and if his enemy tormenteth him, and besiegeth the gates of him, and all wound, all sickness, all cursing, and all wishing of evil, that befalleth to each man of thy people Israel, if any man knoweth the wound of his heart, and holdeth forth his hands in this house, thou shalt hear in heaven, in the place of thy dwelling, and thou shalt do mercy, and thou shalt do that thou give to each man after all his ways, as thou seest his heart. For thou alone knowest the heart of all the sons of men, that they dread thee in all days in which they live on the face of the land, which thou hast given to our fathers. Furthermore and when an alien, that is not of thy people Israel, cometh from a far land for thy name, for thy great name, and thy strong hand, and thine arm stretched out, shall be heard everywhere. Therefore when he cometh, and prayeth in this place, thou shalt hear in heaven, in the firmament of thy dwelling place, and thou shalt do all things, for which the alien calleth thee. That all peoples of lands learn to dread thy name, as thy people Israel doth, and prove, that thy name is called on this house, which I builded. If thy people goeth out to battle against his enemies, by the way whither ever thou sendest them, they shall pray thee against the way of the city which thou hast chosen, and over against the house that I have builded to thy name, and thou shalt hear in heaven the prayers of them, and the beseechings of them, and thou shalt make the doom of them. That if they sin to thee, for no man is that sinneth not, and thou art wroth, and betakest them to their enemies, and they be led prisoners into the land of enemies, far either nigh, and they do penance in their heart in the place of their imprisoning, and be converted, or altogether turned, and beseech in their imprisoning, and say, We have sinned, we have done wickedly, we have done unfaithfully, and they turn again to thee in all their heart, and in all their soul, in the land of their enemies, to which they be led prisoners, and they pray thee over against the way of their land, which thou hast given to their fathers, and of the city which thou hast chosen, and of the temple which I builded to thy name, thou shalt hear in heaven, in the firmament of thy seat, the prayers of them, and the beseechings of them, and thou shalt make the doom of them. And thou shalt be merciful to thy people, that have sinned to thee, and to all the wickednesses, by which they have trespassed against thee, and thou shalt do mercy before those men, that had them prisoners, that those men do mercy to them. For it is thy people, and thine heritage, which thou leddest out of the land of Egypt, from the midst of the iron furnace, that thine eyes be open to the beseeching of thy servant, and of thy people Israel, and thou shalt hear them in all things, for which they call thee. For thou hast separated him to thee into heritage from all the peoples of earth, as thou spackest by Moses, thy servant, when thou, Lord God, leddest our fathers out of Egypt. Forsooth it was done, when Solomon, praying the Lord, had filled all this prayer and beseeching, he rose up from sight of the altar of the Lord. For he had set fast ever either knee to the earth, and he had held forth his hands to heaven. Therefore he stood, and blessed all the church of Israel, and said with great voice, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, that hath given rest to his people Israel, 
by all things which he spake. A word fell not down, soothly neither one, of all goods, of all the good things which he spake by Moses, his servant. Our Lord God be with us, as he was with our fathers, and forsake not us, neither cast us away, but bow he our hearts to himself, that we go in all his ways, and keep his commandments, and ceremonies, and dooms, whichever he commanded to our fathers. And these words of me, by which I have prayed before the Lord, be they nighing to our Lord God by day and night, that he make doom to me his servant, and to his people Israel by all days. And all the peoples of earth know, that the Lord himself is God, and none other without him. Also our heart be perfect with our Lord God, that we go in his dooms, and keep his commandments, as also today. Therefore the king, and all Israel with him, offered sacrifices before the Lord. And Solomon slew peaceable sacrifices, which he offered to the Lord, of oxes two and twenty thousand, and of sheep six score thousand, and the king and the sons of Israel hallowed the temple of the Lord. In that day the king hallowed the middle of the great street, that was before the house of the Lord. For he made their burnt sacrifice, and offering, and the inner fatness of peaceable things. For the brazen altar that was before the Lord was too little, and it might not take the burnt sacrifice, and the offering, and the inner fatness of peaceable things. Therefore Solomon made in that time a solemn feast, and all Israel with him, a great multitude, from the entering of Hamath unto the strand of Egypt, before our Lord God, in seven days and seven days, that is, fourteen days. And in the eighth day he delivered the peoples, which blessed the king, and went forth into their tabernacles, and they were glad and of joyful heart on all the goods that God had done to David, his servant, and to Israel, his people. Chapter 9 And it was done, when Solomon had performed the building of the house of the Lord, and the building of the king, and all thing that he coveted, and would make, the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time, as he appeared to him in Gibeon. And the Lord said to him, I have heard thy prayer, and thy beseeching, that thou hast besought before me. I have hallowed this house, that thou hast builded, that I should set there my name without end, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there in all days. Also if thou goest before me, as thy father went, in simpleness of heart, and in equity, and doest all things which I have commanded to thee, and keepest my dooms, and my lawful things, I shall set the throne of thy realm upon Israel without end, as I spake to David, thy father, and said, A man of thy kin shall not be taken away from the throne of Israel. Forsooth if by turning away, ye and your sons turn away, and follow not me, and keep not my behests and ceremonies, which I have set forth to you, but ye go, and worship alien gods, and honour them, I shall do away Israel from the face of the land which I gave to them, and I shall cast away from my sight the temple, which I hallowed to my name, and Israel shall be into a proverb and into a fable, to all peoples. And this house shall be into ensample of God's offence. Each man that shall pass by it, shall wonder, and shall hiss, and shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus to this land, and to this house? And they shall answer, For they forsook their Lord God, that led the fathers of them out of Egypt, and they followed alien gods, and worshipped them, and honoured them. Therefore the Lord hath brought in upon them all this evil. Soothly when twenty years were filled, after that Solomon had builded twain houses, that is, the house of the Lord, and the house of the king, while Hiram, king of Tyre, gave to Solomon trees of cedar, and of fir, and gold, by all thing that he had needful. Then Solomon gave to Hiram twenty cities in the land of Galilee. And Hiram went out of Tyre that he should see the cities, which Solomon had given to him, and those pleased not him. And he said, Whether these be the cities, which thou, brother, hast given to me. And he called those cities the land of Kabul, that is, displeasing, unto this day. Also Hiram sent to King Solomon six score talents of gold. This is the rent, which Solomon raised, to build the house of the Lord, and his own house, Milo, and the wall of Jerusalem, and Hazer, and Megiddo, and Gezer. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, ascended, and took Gezer, and burnt it by fire. And he killed Canaanites, that dwelled in the city, and gave it into dower to his daughter, the wife of Solomon. Therefore Solomon builded Gezer, and the lower Bethhoron, and Baalath, and Tadmah in the land of wilderness. 
and he made strong all the towns that pertained to him, and were without wall, and the cities of chariots, and the cities of knights, and whatever thing pleased him to build in Jerusalem, and in Lebanon, and in all the land of his power. Solomon made tributaries unto this day all the people, that left of the Amorites, Hittites, and Perizzites, and Hivites, and Jebusites, which be not of the sons of Israel, the sons of these heathen men, that dwelled in the land, that is, which the sons of Israel might not destroy. Soothly King Solomon ordained not any man of the sons of Israel to serve, that is, in vile works, and of the fields, but they were men of war, and servants of him, and princes, and dukes, and masters of his chariots and horses. And five hundred and fifty princes were sovereigns over all the works of Solomon, the which princes had the people subject to them, and commanded to works ordained. And the daughter of Pharaoh went up from the city of David into her house, which house Solomon had builded to her, then he builded Milo. Also Solomon offered in three times by all years burnt sacrifices and peaceable sacrifices, on the altar which he had builded to the Lord, and he burnt incense before the Lord, and the temple was performed. Also King Solomon made a navy in Eziongeba, which is beside Eleth, in the brink of the Red Sea, in the land of Adumea. And Hiram sent in that navy his servants, shipmen, and knowing of the sea, with the servants of Solomon. And when they had come into Ophir, they brought from thence gold of four hundred and twenty talents to King Solomon. Chapter 10 But also the Queen of Sheba, when the fame of Solomon was heard, came in the name of the Lord to assay him in dark and doubtful questions. And she entered with much fellowship and riches into Jerusalem, and with camels bearing sweet smelling things, and gold greatly without number, and precious stones. And she came to King Solomon, and spake to him all things which she had in her heart. And Solomon taught her all words which she had put forth. No word was, that might be hid from the king, and which he answered not to her. And the queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon, and the house that he had builded, and the meats of his table, and the dwelling places of his servants, and the orders of the men serving him, and the clothes of them, and the butlers, and the burnt sacrifices which he offered in the house of the Lord, and she had no more spirit. And she said to the king, The word is true, that I heard in my land, of thy words, and of thy wisdom. And I believed not to men telling to me, till I myself came, and saw with mine eyes, and proved that the half part was not told to me. Thy wisdom is more in thy works, than the fame that I heard. Thy men be blessed, and thy servants be blessed, these that stand before thee ever, and hear thy wisdom. Blessed be thy Lord God, whom thou pleasedest, and hath set thee on the throne of Israel. For the Lord loved Israel without end, and hath ordained thee king, that thou shouldest do doom and rightfulness. Therefore she gave to the king sixscore talents of gold, and full many sweet-smelling things, and precious stones. So many sweet-smelling things were no more brought, as those which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. But also the ship of Hiram, that brought gold from Ophir, brought from Ophir full many trees of Theine, and precious stones. And King Solomon made of the trees of Theine undersettings of the house of the Lord, and of the king's house, and harps, and cytals to singers. Such trees of Theine were not brought, neither seen, till into this present day. Soothly King Solomon gave to the queen of Sheba all things which she would have, and asked of him, besides these things which he had given to her by the king's gift willfully, and she turned again, and went into her land with her servants. Forsooth the weight of gold, that was offered to Solomon by each year, was of six hundred and six and sixty talents of gold, besides that which the men that were on the tollages, that is, rents of things borne about in the land, and that merchants, and all men selling shields, and that all the kings of Arabia, and the dukes of the land, gave. And King Solomon made two hundred shields of purest gold. He gave six hundred shekels of gold into the plates of one shield, and he made three hundred bucklers of proved gold, three hundred talents of gold covered one buckler. And the king put those bucklers in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Also King Solomon made a great throne of ivory, and covered it with full fine gold. And the throne had six degrees, and the highness of the throne was round in the hinder part, and twain hands were on this side and on that side, holding the seat, and two lions stood beside each hand, 
and twelve little lions standing on six degrees, on this side and on that side. Such a work was not made in all realms. But also all the vessels, of which King Solomon drank, were of gold, and all the pertinence of the house of the forest of Lebanon was of purest gold. Silver was not, neither it was a reckoned of any price in the days of Solomon. For the ship of the king went once by three years with the ship of Hiram into Tharshish, and brought from thence gold, and silver, and teeth of elephants, and apes, and peacocks. Therefore King Solomon was magnified above all kings of earth in riches and wisdom. And all earth desired to see the cheer of Solomon, to hear the wisdom of him, which wisdom God had given in his heart. And all men brought gifts to him, vessels of gold, and of silver, clothes, and armors of battle, and sweet-smelling things, and horses, and mules, by each year. And Solomon gathered together chariots, and horsemen, and a thousand and four hundred chariots were made to him, and twelve thousand horsemen, and he disposed them by strengthened cities, and with the king in Jerusalem. And he made, that so great abundance of silver was in Jerusalem, how great was also of stones, and he gave the multitude of cedars as sycamores, that grow in field places. And the horses of Solomon were led out of Egypt, and of Koa. For merchants of the king bought them of Koa, and brought them to him, for price ordained. For a chariot went out of Egypt for six hundred shekels of silver, and an horse for an hundred and fifty shekels. And by this manner all the kings of Hittites, and of Syria, sold horses. Chapter 11 Forsooth King Solomon loved burningly many alien women, and the daughter of Pharaoh, and women of Moab, and Ammonites, and Edomians, and Sidonians, and Hittites. Of the folks of which the Lord said to the sons of Israel, Ye shall not enter to those folks, neither any of them shall enter to you. For most certainly they shall turn away your hearts, that ye follow the gods of them. And so King Solomon was coupled to these women, by most burning love. And wives as queens were seven hundred to him, and three hundred secondary wives. And the women turned away his heart. And when he was then eld, his heart was depraved by women, that he followed alien gods. And his heart was not perfect with his Lord God, as the heart of David, his father, was perfect. But Solomon worshipped Astarte, the goddess of Sidonians, and Chemosh, the god of Moabites, and Moloch, the idol of Ammonites. And Solomon did that, that pleased not before the Lord, and he fulfilled not that he followed the Lord, as David, his father. Then Solomon builded a temple to Chemosh, the idol of Moab, in the hill which is against Jerusalem, and to Moloch, the idol of the sons of Ammon. And by this manner he did to all his alien wives, the which burnt incenses, and offered to their gods. Therefore the Lord was wroth to Solomon for his soul was turned away from the Lord God of Israel, that appeared to him the second time, and commanded of this word, that he should not follow alien gods, and he kept not those things, which the Lord commanded to him. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, For thou haddest this thing with thee, and keptest not my covenant, and my behests, which I commanded to thee, I shall break, and I shall part thy realm, and I shall give it to thy servant. Nevertheless I shall not do in thy days, for David, thy father, I shall cut it from the hand of thy son, neither I shall do away all the realm, but I shall give one lineage to thy son, for David, my servant, and for Jerusalem, which I chose. Forsooth the Lord raised to Solomon an adversary, Hadad Adumian, of the king's seed, that was in Edom. For when David was in Adumea, and Joab, the prince of his chivalry, had gone up to bury them that were slain, and he had slain each male kind in Adumea, for Joab, and all Israel, dwelled there by six months, till they had killed each male kind in Adumea. Hadad himself fled, and men of Adumea, of the servants of his father, with him, that he should enter into Egypt. Soothly Hadad was a little child. And when they had risen from Midian, they came into Paran. And they took with them men of Paran, and entered into Egypt, to Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Pharaoh gave an house to him, and ordained to him meats, and assigned to him land. And Hadad found grace before Pharaoh greatly, in so much that Pharaoh gave to him a wife, the sister of his wife, the sister of the queen, of Tarpines. And the sister of Tarpines engendered to him a son, Genubath, and Tarpines nursed him in the house of Pharaoh. And Genubath dwelled before Pharaoh, 
with the sons of Pharaoh. And when Hadad had heard in Egypt, that David slept with his fathers, and that Joab, the prince of chivalry, was dead, he said to Pharaoh, Suffer thou me, that I go into my land. And Pharaoh said to him, And of what thing hast thou need with me, that thou seekest to go to thy land? And he answered, Of nothing. But I beseech thee, that thou deliver me, that thou let me go. And God raised another adversary to Solomon, Rezan, the son of Eliada, that fled Hadadezer, king of Zobah, his lord, and gathered men against him, and was made the prince of thieves, when David killed them, and they went to Damascus, and dwelled there, and they made him king in Damascus. And he was adversary of Israel in all the days of Solomon. And this is the evil of Hadad, and his hatred against Israel, and he reigned in Syria. Also Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, of Ephraim of Zerada, the servant of Solomon, of which Jeroboam, a woman widow, Zeruah by name, was mother, he raised his hand against the king. And this was cause of rebelty against the king. For Solomon builded Milo, and made even the swallow of the city of David, his father. Forsooth Jeroboam was a mighty man and strong. And Solomon saw the young waxing man of good kindred, and witting in things to be done, and Solomon made him prefect, either sovereign, upon the tributes of all the house of Joseph. Therefore it was done in that time, that Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, and a hear of Shiloh, a prophet, covered with a new mantle, found him in the way, and they twain were alone in the field. And Ahir took his new mantle, with which he was covered, and he cut it into twelve parts, and said to Jeroboam, Take to thee ten cuttings of the mantle, for the Lord God of Israel saith these things, Lo! I shall cut the realm from the hand of Solomon, and I shall give to thee ten lineages, but one lineage shall dwell to him, for David, my servant, and for Jerusalem, the city which I chose of all the lineages of Israel. This cutting of the realm shall be, for Solomon forsook me, and worshipped Astarte, the goddess of Sidonians, and Chemosh, the god of Moab, and Moloch, the god of the sons of Ammon, and went not in my ways, that he did write wiseness before me, and my behests, and my dooms, as David, his father, did. And I shall not take away all the realm from his hand, but I shall put him duke in all the days of his life, for David, my servant, whom I chose, which kept my behests, and my commandments. Soothly I shall take away the realm from the hand of his son, and I shall give ten lineages to thee. For sooth I shall give one lineage to his son, that a lantern dwell to David, my servant, in all days before me in Jerusalem, the city which I chose, that my name should be there. For sooth I shall take thee, and thou shalt reign on all things which thy soul desireth, and thou shalt be king upon Israel. Therefore if thou shalt hear all things which I shall command to thee, and if thou shalt go in my ways, and if thou shalt do that, that is rightful before me, and if thou shalt keep my commandments, and my behests, as David, my servant, did, I shall be with thee, and I shall build a faithful house to thee, as I builded an house to David, and I shall give Israel to thee, and I shall torment the seed of David on this thing, nevertheless not in all days. Therefore Solomon would slay Jeroboam, which rose, and fled into Egypt, to Shishak, king of Egypt, and he was in Egypt unto the death of Solomon. Forsooth the residue of the words of Solomon, and all things which he did, and his wisdom, lo! All those things be written in the book of words of days of Solomon. And the days in which Solomon reigned in Jerusalem upon all Israel, be forty years. And Solomon slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David, his father, and Rehoboam, his son, reigned for him. Chapter 12 Forsooth Rehoboam came into Shechem. For all Israel was gathered thither to make him king. And soothly Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, when he was yet in Egypt, and fled from the face of King Solomon, turned again from Egypt, for the death of Solomon was heard, and they sent, and called him. Therefore Jeroboam came, and all the multitude of Israel, and they spake to Rehoboam, and said, Thy father putted the most hard yoke upon us, therefore abate thou a little now of the hardest commandment of thy father, and of the full grievous yoke that he hath put upon us, and we shall serve to thee. And Rehoboam said to them, Go ye till to the third day, and turn ye again to me. And when the people had gone, 
King Rehoboam took counsel with the elder men, that stood before Solomon, his father, while he lived yet. And Rehoboam said, What counsel give ye to me, that I answer to the people? Which said to him, If thou obeyest today to this people, and servest this people, and givest stead to their asking, and speakest to them light, or easy, words, they shall be servants to thee in all days. And Rehoboam forsook the counsel of eld men, which they gave to him, and took young men, that were nourished with him, and stood nigh him. And he said to them, What counsel give ye to me, that I answer to this people, that said to me, Make thou easier the yoke that thy father hath put upon us. And the young men, that were nourished with him, said to him, Thus speak thou to this people, that spake to thee, and said, Thy father made grievous our yoke, relieve thou us. Thus thou shalt speak to them, My least finger is greater than the back of my father, and now my father putted on you a grievous yoke, forsooth I shall add on your yoke. My father beat you with scourges, but I shall beat you with scorpions. Therefore Jeroboam, and all the people, came to Rehoboam, in the third day, as the king spake, saying, Turn ye again to me in the third day. And the king answered hard things to the people, while the counsel of elder men was forsaken, that they had given to him. And he spake to them by the counsel of young men, and said, My father made grievous your yoke, forsooth I shall add to your yoke. My father beat you with scourges, but I shall beat you with scorpions. And the king assented not to the people, for the Lord had turned him away, that the Lord should raise up his word, that he had spoken in the hand of the prophet Ahir of Shiloh to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Then the people saw, that the king would not hear them, and the people answered to the king, and said, What part is to us in David, either what heritage in the son of Jesse? Israel, turn thou again into thy tabernacles. Now, David, see thou thine house. And Israel went into his tabernacles. For sooth Rehoboam reigned on the sons of Israel, which dwelled in the cities of Judah. Therefore King Rehoboam sent Adoram, that was on the tributes, and all the people of Israel stoned him, and he was dead. For sooth King Rehoboam went up hastily upon his chariot, and fled into Jerusalem, and Israel departed from the house of David, till into this present day. For sooth it was done, when all Israel had heard that Jeroboam turned again, they sent, and called him, when the company was gathered together, and they made him king upon all Israel, and no man followed the house of David, except the lineage alone of Judah. And Rehoboam came to Jerusalem, and gathered together all the house of Judah, and the lineage of Benjamin, and hundred and fourscore thousand of chosen men and warriors, that they should fight against the house of Israel, and should bring again the realm to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. Forsooth the word of God was made to Shemaiah, the man of God, and said, Speak thou to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the house of Judah and of Benjamin, and to the residue of the people, and say thou, The Lord saith these things, Ye shall not go up, neither ye shall fight against your brethren, the sons of Israel. Turn each man again into his house, for this word is done of me. They heard the word of the Lord, and they turned again from the journey, as the Lord commanded to them. And Jeroboam builded Shechem, in the hill of Ephraim, and dwelled there. And he went out from thence, and builded Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the realm shall turn again to the house of David, if this people ascendeth to Jerusalem, that it make sacrifice in the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. And then the heart of this people shall turn again to their Lord, Rehoboam, king of Judah. And they shall slay me, and shall turn again to him. And by counsel thought out, Jeroboam made twain golden calves. And he said to the people, do not ye ascend more into Jerusalem, Israel, lo, thy gods, that led thee out of the land of Egypt. And he set one calf in Bethel, and the Topher in Dan. And this word was made to Israel into sin, for the people went into Dan, to worship the calf. And Jeroboam made temples in high places, and he made priests of the last men of the people, the which were not of the sons of Levi. And the king ordained a solemn day in the eighth month, in the fifteenth day of the month, by likeness of the solemnity that was hallowed in Judah. And the king went up, and made in like manner an altar in Bethel, that he should offer to the calves, which he had made. And he ordained in Bethel priests of the high places, which he had made. And he went up upon the altar, 
which he had builded in Bethel, in the fifteenth day of the eighth month, which he had feigned of his heart, and he made a solemnity to the sons of Israel, and he went upon the altar, that he should burn incense. Chapter 13 And lo, a man of God came from Judah, by the word of the Lord, into Bethel, while Jeroboam stood upon the altar, casting incense. And he cried out against the altar, by the word of the Lord, and said, Altar, altar. The Lord saith these things, Lo, a son, Josiah by name, shall be born to the house of David, and he shall offer upon thee the priests of high things, the which burn now incense in thee, and he shall burn the bones of men upon thee. And he gave a sign in that day, and said, This shall be the sign that the Lord spake, Lo, the altar shall be cut, and the ash which is therein, shall be shed out. And when the king had heard the word of the man of God, which he had cried against the altar in Bethel, the king held forth his hand from the altar, and said, Take ye him. And his hand dried, which he had held forth, and he might not draw it again to himself. Also the altar was cut, and the ash was shed out of the altar, by the sign which the man of God before said, in the word of the Lord. And the king said to the man of God, Beseech thou the face of the Lord thy God, and pray thou for me, that mine hand be restored to me. And the man of God prayed the face of the Lord. And the hand of the king turned again to him, and it was made as it was before. And the king spake to the man of God, Come thou home with me, that thou eat, and I shall give gifts to thee. And the man of God said to the king, Though thou shalt give to me the half part of thine house, I shall not come with thee, neither I shall eat bread, neither I shall drink water in this place. For so it was commanded to me by the word of the Lord, commanding, Thou shalt not eat bread, neither thou shalt drink water, neither thou shalt turn again by the way by which thou camest. Therefore he went by another way, and turned not again by the way, by which he came into Bethel. For sooth an eld prophet dwelled then in Bethel, to whom his sons came, and told to him all the works which the man of God had done in that day in Bethel, and they told to their father the words which he spake to the king. And the father of them said to them, By what way went he? His sons showed to him the way, by which the man of God went, that came from Judah. And he said to his sons, Saddle ye an ass to me. And when they had saddled the ass, he went up, and went after the man of God, and found him sitting under a terebinth. And he said to the man of God, Whether thou art the man of God, that camest from Judah? He answered, I am. And he said to him, Come thou with me home, that thou eat bread. And he said, I may not turn again, neither come with thee, neither I shall eat bread, neither I shall drink water in this place. For the Lord spake to me in the word of the Lord, and said, Thou shalt not eat bread, and thou shalt not drink water there, neither thou shalt turn again by the way by which thou wentest thither. And he said to him, And I am a prophet like thee. And an angel spake to me by the word of the Lord, and said, Let again him into thine house, that he eat bread, and drink water. He deceived the man of God, and brought him again with him. Therefore he ate bread in his house, and drank water. And when he sat at the table, the word of the Lord was made to the prophet that brought him again. And he cried to the man of God that came from Judah, and said, The Lord saith these things, for thou obeyedest not to the mouth of the Lord, and keptest not the commandment which thy Lord God commanded to thee, and thou turnedest again, and atest bread, and drankest water in the place in which I commanded to thee, that thou shouldest not eat bread, neither shouldest drink water, thy dead body shall not be born into the sepulchre of thy fathers. And when he had eaten and drunk, the prophet, whom he had brought again, saddled his ass. And when he had gone forth, a lion found him in the way, and killed him. And his dead body was cast forth in the way. Soothly the ass stood beside him, and the lion also stood beside the dead body. And lo, men passing saw the dead body cast forth in the way, and the lion standing beside the dead body, and they came, and published it in the city, in which the eld prophet dwelled. And when that prophet, that brought him again from the way, had heard this, he said, It is the man of God, that was unobedient to the mouth of God. And the Lord betook him to the lion, that hath broken him, and killed him, by the word of the Lord which he spake to him. And he said to his sons, Saddle ye an ass to me. 
and when they had saddled, and he had gone, he found his dead body cast forth in the way, and the ass and the lion standing beside the dead body, and the lion ate not the dead body, neither hurted the ass. Therefore the prophet took the dead body of the man of God, and put it on the ass, and he turned again, and brought it into the city of the old prophet, that he should bewail him. And he put his dead body in his sepulchre, and they bewailed him, and said, Alas! Alas! My brother! And when they had bewailed him, he said to his sons, When I shall be dead, bury me in the sepulchre, in which the man of God is buried, put ye my bones beside his bones. For soothly the word shall come, which he before said in the word of the Lord, against the altar that is in Bethel, and against all the temples of high places, which be in the cities of Samaria. After these words Jeroboam turned not again from his worst way, but on the contrary, of the last of the people he made priests of high places, whoever would, fulfilled his hand, and he was made priest of high places. And for this cause the house of Jeroboam sinned, and it was destroyed, and done away from the face of the earth. Chapter 14 In that time Abijah, son of Jeroboam, was sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Rise thou up, and change clothing, that thou be not known, that thou art the wife of Jeroboam. And go thou into Shiloh, where Ahir, the prophet, is, which spake to me, that I should reign upon this people. Also take thou in thine hand ten loaves, and a cake, and a vessel of honey, and go thou to him. For he shall show to thee, what shall befall to this child. The wife of Jeroboam did as he said, and she rose up, and went into Shiloh, and came into the house of Ahir, and Ahir might not see, for his eyes dimmed for eld. Forsooth the Lord said to Ahir, Lo, the wife of Jeroboam entereth, that she counsel thee on her son, which is sick. Thou shalt speak these and these things to her. Therefore when she had entered, and had feigned herself to be that she was not, Ahir heard the sound of the feet of her entering by the door, and he said, Enter thou, the wife of Jeroboam, why feignest thou thee to be another? Forsooth I am sent in hard messenger, that is, telling hard things, to thee. Go thou, and say to Jeroboam, The Lord God of Israel saith these things, for I enhanced thee from the midst of the people, and I gave thee duke on my people Israel, and I cutted the realm of the house of David, and I gave it to thee, and thou were not as my servant David, that kept my behests, and followed me in all his heart, and did that that was pleasant in my sight. But thou hast wrought evil, over all men that were before thee, and maddest to thee alien gods, and weld those together, that thou shouldest excite me. Thou shouldest stir me to wrathfulness, soothly thou hast cast forth me behind thy back. Therefore, lo, I shall bring in evils upon the house of Jeroboam, and I shall smite the house of Jeroboam unto a pisser to the wall, and unto him that is imprisoned, and the last in Israel. And I shall cleanse the relics, or remnants, of the house of Jeroboam, as dung is wont to be cleansed unto purity, either cleanness, soothly dogs shall eat them, that shall die of the house of Jeroboam in the city, and birds of the air shall devour them, that shall die in the field, for the Lord spake. Therefore rise thou, and go into thine house, and in that entering of thy feet into the city, the child shall die. And all Israel shall bewail him, and shall bury him, for this child alone of Jeroboam shall be born into the sepulchre, for a good word is found on him of the Lord God of Israel, in the house of Jeroboam. Forsooth the Lord shall ordain to him a king upon Israel, that shall smite the house of Jeroboam, in this day, and in this time, that is, of nigh. And the Lord God of Israel shall smite, as a reed in the water is wont to be moved. And he shall draw out Israel from this good land, which he gave to their fathers, and he shall winnow them over the flood, for they made to them Mome woods, that they should stir the Lord to ire. And the Lord God shall betake Israel to his enemies, for the sins of Jeroboam, that sinned, and made Israel to do sin. Therefore the wife of Jeroboam rose, and went, and came into Terzar, and when she entered into the threshold of the house, the child was dead. And they buried him, and all Israel bewailed him, by the word of the Lord, which he spake in the hand of his servant, Ahir the prophet. Forsooth, lo, the residue of the words of Jeroboam, how he fought, and how he reigned, be written in the book of words of the days of kings of Israel. Forsooth the days, in which Jeroboam reigned, 
be two and twenty years. And Jeroboam slept with his fathers, and Nadab, his son, reigned for him. For sooth Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was of one and forty years. When he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord chose of all the lineages of Israel, that he should set his name there. And the name of his mother was Nama Ammonite. And Judah did evil before the Lord, and they stirred him to ire on all things, which their fathers did in their sins, by which they sinned. For also they builded to themselves altars, and images, and woods, on each high hill, and under each tree full of boughs. But also men of women's conditions, womanish men were in the land, and they did all the abominations of heathen men, which the Lord all break before the face of the sons of Israel. For sooth in the fifth year of the realm of Rehoboam, Shishak, the king of Egypt, went up into Jerusalem. And he took the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the king's treasures, and he ravished all things. Also he ravished the golden shields which Solomon made. For which king Rehoboam made brazen shields, and gave those in the hands of dukes of shieldmakers, and of them that watched before the door of the house of the king. And when the king entered into the house of the Lord, they that had office to go before, bear those, and they bear those again to the place of armor of shieldmakers. Forsooth, lo, the residue of the words of Rehoboam, and all things which he did, be written in the book of words of days of kings of Judah. And battle was betwixt Rehoboam and Jeroboam, in all days. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers, and was buried with them in the city of David. And the name of his mother was Nama Ammonite, and Abijam, his son, reigned for him. Chapter 15 Therefore in the eighteenth year of the realm of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, Abijam reigned upon Judah. Three years he reigned in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Marcha, the daughter of Abishalom. And he went in all the sins of his father, which he did before him, and his heart was not perfect with his Lord God, as the heart of David, his father, was perfect. But for David, his Lord God gave to him a lantern in Jerusalem, that he should raise his son after him, and that he should stand in Jerusalem. For David had done rightfulness in the eyes of the Lord, and had not bowed from all things that the Lord had commanded to him, in all the days of his life, except the word of Uriah Hittite. Nevertheless battle was betwixt Abijam and Jeroboam, in all the time of his life. Soothly the residue of the words of Abijam, and all things that he did, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Judah. And battle was betwixt Abijam and Jeroboam. And Abijam slept with his fathers. And they buried him in the city of David, and Asa, his son, reigned for him. And Asa, king of Judah, reigned in the twentieth year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, and Asa reigned one and forty years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Marcha, the daughter of Abishalom. And Asa did rightfulness in the sight of the Lord, as David, his father, did. And he took away from the land men of women's conditions, and he purged all the filths of idols, which his fathers made. Furthermore and he removed Marcha, his mother, that she should not be princess in the solemn things of the idol Priapus, and in his mome wood that she had hallowed, and he destroyed the den of him, and he brake the foulest simulacrum, and burnt it in the strand of Kidron. Soothly he did not away the high things. Nevertheless the heart of Asa was perfect with his Lord God, in all his days. And he brought into the house of the Lord those things, which his father had hallowed, and avowed, silver, and gold, and vessels. Forsooth battle was betwixt Asa and Baasha, king of Israel, in all the days of them. And Baasha, king of Israel, went up into Judah, and builded Ramah, that no man of the part of Asa, king of Judah, might go out, either go in. Therefore Asa took all the silver and gold, that left in the treasuries of the house of the Lord, and in the treasuries of the king's house, and gave it into the hands of his servants. And he sent it to Ben-Hadad, the son of Tabrimon, son of Hesion, the king of Syria, that dwelled in Damascus, and said, A bond of peace is betwixt me and thee, and betwixt my father and thy father, and therefore I sent to thee gifts, gold, and silver. And I ask, that thou come, and make void the bond of peace, that thou hast with Baasha, king of Israel, and that he go away from me. Ben-Hadad assented to king Asa, 
and sent the princes of his host into the cities of Israel. And they smote Ejon, and Dan, and Abel, the house of Marcha, and all Kinoth, that is, all the land of Naphtali. And when Barsha had heard this thing, he left to build Ramah, and turned again into Terzar. For sooth king Asa sent message into all Judah, and said, No man be excused. And they took the stones of Ramah, and the trees thereof, by which Barsha had builded, and king Asa builded of the same stones and trees Geber of Benjamin, and Mitzpah. Soothly the residue of all the words of Asa, and of all his strength, and all things that he did, and the cities which he builded, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of kings of Judah. Nevertheless Asa had ache in his feet, in the time of his eld. And Asa slept with his fathers, and he was buried with them in the city of David, his father, and Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned for him. For Suth Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, reigned on Israel, in the second year of Asa, king of Judah, and he reigned on Israel two years. And he did that, that was evil in the sight of the Lord, and he went in the ways of his father, and in the sins of him, in which he made Israel to do sin. And Baasha, the son of Ahir, of the house of Isaac, set a treason to him, and he smote him in Jibbethon, which is a city of Philistines, and Nadab and all Israel besieged Jibbethon. Therefore Baasha killed him, in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned for him. And when he had reigned, he smote all the house of Jeroboam. He left not one man of his seed, till he did away him, by the word of the Lord, which he spake in the hand of his servant, a hearer of Shiloh, a prophet, for the sins of Jeroboam which he sinned, and in which he made Israel to do sin, and for the trespass, by which he wrathed the Lord God of Israel. Soothly the residue of the words of Nadab, and all things which he wrought, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. And battle was betwixt Asa and Baasha, king of Israel, in all the days of them. In the third year of Asa, king of Judah, Baasha, the son of Ahir, reigned upon all Israel, in Terzar, four and twenty years. And he did evil before the Lord, and he went in the ways of Jeroboam, and in his sins, by which he made Israel to do sin. Chapter 16 Forsooth the word of the Lord was made to Jehu, the son of Hanani, against Baasha, and said, For that that I raised thee from dust, and setted thee duke on Israel, my people, soothly thou wentest in the way of Jeroboam, and thou hast made my people Israel to do sin, that thou shouldest stir me to ire, in the sins of them. Lo! I shall cut away the hinder things of Baasha, and the hinder things of his house, and I shall make thine house as the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat. Dogs shall eat that man of Baasha, that shall be dead in the city, and birds of the air shall eat that man of Baasha, that shall die in the field. Soothly the residue of the words of Baasha, and whatever things he did, and his battles, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. And so Baasha slept with his fathers, and he was buried in Terzar, and Ella, his son, reigned for him. Forsooth when the word of the Lord was made in the hand of Jehu, the son of Hanani, against Baasha, and against his house, and against all the evil which he did before the Lord, to stir him to ire in the works of his hands, that he should be as the house of Jeroboam, for this cause he killed him. In the six and twentieth year of Asa, king of Judah, Ella, the son of Baasha, reigned upon Israel, in Terzar, two years. And Zimri, his servant, duke of the half part of his knights, rebelled against him, soothly Ella was in Terzar, and drank and was drunken in the house of Arza, prefect of Terzar. Therefore Zimri fell in, and smote Ella, and killed him, in the seven and twentieth year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned for him. And when he had reigned, and sat upon his throne, he smote all the house of Baasha, and he left not thereof a pisser to the wall, and his kinsmen, and friends. And Zimri did away all the house of Baasha, by the word of the Lord, which he spake to Baasha, in the hand of Jehu, the prophet, for all the sins of Baasha, and for the sins of Ella, his son, which sinned, and made Israel to do sin, and wrathed the Lord God of Israel in their vanities. Soothly the residue of the words of Ella, and all things which he did, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. 
In the seven and twentieth year of Asa, king of Judah, Zimri reigned seven days in Terzar. Forsooth the host of Israel besieged Jibbethon, the city of Philistines. And when it had heard, that Zimri had rebelled, and had slain the king, all Israel made Omri king to them, that was prince of the chivalry, on Israel, in that day, in their tents. Therefore Omri went up, and all Israel with him, from Jibbethon, and besieged Terzar. And Zimri saw, that the city should be overcome, and he entered into the palace, and burnt himself with the king's house, and he was dead. In his sins which he sinned, doing evil before the Lord, and going in the way of Jeroboam, and in his sins, by which he made Israel to do sin. Soothly the residue of the words of Zimri, and of his treasons, and tyranny, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. Then the people of Israel was parted into two parts. The half part of the people followed Tibni, the son of Ginnath, to make him king, and the other half part followed Omri. And the people that was with Omri, had the mastery over the people that followed Tibni, the son of Ginnath, and Tibni was dead, and Omri reigned. In the one and thirtieth year of Asa, king of Judah, Omri reigned upon Israel twelve years. In Terzar, he reigned six years. And he bought of Shema, for two talents of silver, the hill of Samaria, and builded that hill. And he called the name of the city, which he had builded, by the name of Shema, lord of the hill of Samaria. Forsooth Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord, and wrought waywardly, or wickedly, over all men that were before him. And he went in all the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and in his sins, by which he made Israel to do sin, that he should stir to ire, in his vanities, the Lord God of Israel. Forsooth the residue of the words of Omri, and his battles, which he did, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. And Omri slept with his fathers, and was buried in Samaria, and Ahab, his son, reigned for him. Forsooth Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned upon Israel, in the eight and thirtieth year of Asa, king of Judah. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned upon Israel, in Samaria, two and twenty years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord, over all men that were before him. And it sufficed not to him that he went in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, furthermore and he wedded a wife, Jezebel, the daughter of Ithbal, king of Sidonians. And he went and served Baal, and worshipped him. And he set up an altar to Baal in the temple of Baal, which he had builded in Samaria, and he planted a mome wood. And Ahab added to in his work, and stirred to ire the Lord God of Israel, more than all kings of Israel that were before him. Forsooth in his days he of Bethel builded Jericho. In Abiram, his first son, he founded it, and in Segub, his last son, he setted the gates thereof, by the word of the Lord, which he had spoken in the hand of Joshua the son of Nun. Chapter 17 And Elijah Tishbite, of the dwellers of Gilead, said to Ahab, The Lord God of Israel liveth, in whose sight I stand, dew and rain shall not be in these years, no but by the words of my mouth. And the word of the Lord was made to him, and said, Go thou away from hence, and go against the east, and be thou hid in the strand of Cherith, that is against Jordan, and there thou shalt drink of the strand, and I have commanded to crows, that they feed thee there. Therefore he went, and did by the word of the Lord. And when he had gone, he sat in the strand of Cherith, that is against Jordan. And crows bare to him bread and flesh early, and in like manner in the eventide, and he drank of the strand. And after some days the strand was dried, for it had not rained on the earth. Therefore the word of the Lord was made to him, and said, Rise thou, and go into Zarephath of Sidonians, and thou shalt dwell there. For I have commanded to a woman widow there, that she feed thee. He rose, and went into Zarephath of Sidonians. And when he had come to the gate of the city, a woman widow gathering sticks appeared to him. And he called her, and said to her, Give thou to me a little of water in a vessel, that I drink. And when she went to bring it, he cried behind her back, and said, I beseech, bring thou to me also a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she answered, Thy Lord God liveth, for I have no bread, no but as much of meal in a pot, as a fist may take, and a little of oil in a vessel. Lo! 
I gather two sticks, that I enter, and make it to me, and to my son, that we eat, and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not thou dread, but go, and make as thou saidest. Nevertheless make thou first to me of that little meal a little loaf, bacon under ashes, and bring thou it to me. Soothly thou shalt make afterward to thee and to thy son. For sooth the Lord God of Israel saith these things, The pot of meal shall not fail, and the vessel of oil shall not be abated, till to the day in which the Lord shall give rain on the face of the earth. And she went, and did by the word of Elijah, and he ate, and she, and her house. And from that day the pot of meal failed not, and the vessel of oil was not abated, by the word of the Lord, which he had spoken in the hand of Elijah. Forsooth it was done after these words, the son of a woman housewife, was sick, and the sickness was full strong, so that breath dwelled not in him. Therefore she said to Elijah, What to me and to thee, thou man of God? Enteredest thou to me, that my wickedness should be remembered, and that thou shouldest slay my son? And Elijah said to her, Give thy son to me. And he took that son from her bosom, and bare into the solar, where he dwelled, and he put him on his bed. And he cried to the Lord, and said, My Lord God, whether thou hast tormented also the widow, with whom I am sustained in all manner, that thou killedest her son. He spread abroad himself, and was meted upon the child by three times. And he cried to the Lord, and said, My Lord God, I beseech, the soul of this child turn again into the entrails of him. The Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child turned again within him, and he lived again. And Elijah took the child, and put him down of the solar into the lower house, and betook him to his mother. And he said to her, Lo, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now in this I have known, that thou art a man of God, and the word of the Lord is sooth in thy mouth. Chapter 18 After many days the word of the Lord was made to Elijah, in the third year, and said, Go, and show thee to Ahab, that I give rain upon the face of the earth. Therefore Elijah went to show himself to Ahab. For sooth a great hunger was made in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, the dispenser, I the steward, of his house, for sooth Obadiah dreaded greatly the Lord God of Israel. For when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord, he took an hundred prophets, and hid them, by fifties and fifties, in dens, and fed them with bread and water. Then Ahab said to Obadiah, Go thou into the land, to all the wells of waters, and into all valleys, if in hap we may find grass, and save horses and mules, and work beasts perish not utterly. And they parted the countries to themselves, that they should compass those. Ahab went by one way, and Obadiah went by another way, by himself. And when Obadiah was in the way, Elijah met him. And when he had known Elijah, he fell on his face, and said, Whether thou art my lord Elijah? To whom he answered, I am. And Elijah said, Go thou, and say to thy lord, Elijah is present. And Obadiah said, What have I sinned, for thou betakest me in the hand of Ahab, that he slay me? Thy lord God liveth, for no folk either realm is, whither my lord, seeking thee, sent not. And when all men answered, He is not here, he charged greatly all realms and folks, for thou were not found. And now thou sayest to me, Go, and say to thy lord, Elijah is present. And when I shall depart from thee, the Spirit of the Lord shall bear thee away into a place which I know not. And I shall enter, and tell to Ahab, and he shall not find thee, and he shall slay thee. Forsooth thy servant dreadeth the Lord from his young childhood. Whether it is not showed to thee, my Lord, what I did, when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord, that I hid of the prophets of the Lord an hundred men, by fifty and fifty, in dens, and I fed them with bread and water. And now thou sayest, Go, and say to thy Lord, Elijah is present, Elijah is nigh, that he slay me. And Elijah said, The Lord of hosts liveth, before whose sight I stand, for today I shall appear to him. Therefore Obadiah went into the meeting of Ahab, and showed it to him, and Ahab came into the meeting of Elijah. And when he had seen Elijah, he said, Whether thou art he, that troublest Israel. And he said, not I trouble Israel, but thou, and the house of thy father, 
which have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and followed Balaam. Nevertheless now send thou, and gather to me all Israel, into the hill of Carmel, and the four hundred and fifty prophets of Baal, and four hundred prophets of Mome Woods, that eat of the table of Jezebel. Ahab sent to all the sons of Israel, and gathered together the prophets in the hill of Carmel. Forsooth Elijah nigh to all the people of Israel, and said, How long halt ye into two parts? If the Lord is God, follow ye him, and if Baal is God, follow ye him. And the people answered not one word to him. And Elijah said again to the people, I dwelled alone a prophet of the Lord. Soothly the prophets of Baal be four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the Mome woods be four hundred men. Twain oxes be given to us. And choose they one ox, and they shall cut into gobbets, and put it on wood, but put they not fire under. And I shall make the tother ox into sacrifice, and I shall put on the wood, and I shall not put fire under. Call ye the name of your gods, and I shall call the name of my God. And the God that heareth by fire falling down, given from heaven to waste the sacrifice, be he God. And all the people answered, and said, The reason is best, that Elijah hath spoken. Therefore Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose ye one ox to you, and make ye first your sacrifice, for ye be the more, and call ye the names of your gods, and put ye not fire under. And when they had taken the ox, whom Elijah gave to them, they made sacrifice, and called the name of Baal, from the morrow tide till to midday, and said, Baal, hear us. And no voice was, neither any that answered. And they skipped over the altar, which they had made. And when it was then midday, Elijah scorned them, and said, Cry ye with greater voice, for Baal is your God, and in hap he speaketh with another, either he is in a harbourgery, either in the way, either certainly he sleepeth, that he be raised up. Therefore they cried with great voice, and they cut themselves with knives and lancets, after their custom, till they were beshed with blood. But after that midday passed, and while they prophesied, or prayed, the time came, in which the sacrifices want to be offered, neither voice was heard of the gods, neither any answered, neither perceived them praying. Elijah said to all the people, Come ye to me. And when the people came to him, he arrayed the altar of the Lord, that was destroyed. And he took twelve stones, by the number of the lineages of the sons of Jacob, to which Jacob the word of the Lord was made, and said, Israel shall be thy name. And he builded an altar of stones, in the name of the Lord, and he made a leading to of water, either a ditch, as by two little ditches, or furrows, in the compass of the altar. And he dressed wood, and he parted the ox by members, and put it upon the wood, and said, Fill ye four pots with water, and pour ye it upon the burnt sacrifice, and upon the wood. And again he said, Also the second time do ye this. And they did the second time. And he said, Do ye the same thing the third time and they did the third time. And the waters ran about the altar, and the ditch, or rut, of leading to of water was filled. And when the time was then, that the burnt sacrifice should be offered, Elijah the prophet nighed, and said, Lord God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Israel, show thou today that thou art God of Israel, and that I am thy servant, and have done all these words by thy commandment. Lord, hear thou me. Lord, hear thou me that this people learn, that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast converted again the heart of them. Soothly fire of the Lord fell down then, and devoured the burnt sacrifice, the wood, and the stones, and it licked up also the powder, and the water that was in the leading, of water. And when all the people had seen this, the people fell into his face, and said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And Elijah said to them, Take ye the prophets of Baal not one soothly escape of them. And when they had taken him, Elijah led him to the strand of Kishon, and killed him there. And Elijah said to Ahab, Go thou up, and eat, and drink, for the sound of much rain is nigh. Ahab went up to eat and drink. But Elijah went up into the hill of Carmel, and he set lowly his face to the earth, betwixt his knees, and said to his servant, Go thou up, and behold thou against the sea. And when he had gone up, and beheld, he said, Nothing is. And again Elijah said to him, Turn thou again seven times. And in the seventh time, lo, 
a little cloud, as the step of a man, went up from the sea. And Elijah said, Go thou up, and say to Ahab, Join thy chariot, and go down, lest the rain before occupy thee. And when they turned them hither and thither, lo, heavens were made dark, and cloud, and wind, and great rain was made. Therefore Ahab went up, and went into Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was made upon Elijah. And when his loins were girded, he ran before Ahab, till he came into Jezreel. Chapter 19 Forsooth Ahab told to Jezebel all things that Elijah had done, and how he had slain with sword all the prophets of Baal. And Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, and said, Gods do these things to me, and add these things too, no but tomorrow in this hour I shall put thy life as the life of one of them. Therefore Elijah dreaded, and rose, and went whither ever his will bear him, and he came into Beersheba of Judah, and he left there his servant, and went into desert, the way of one day. And when he came, and sat under one juniper tree, he asked to his soul, that he should die. And he said, Lord, it sufficed to me, take my soul, for I am not better than my father's. And he casted forth himself, and slept in the shadow of the juniper tree. And lo, the angel of the Lord touched him, and said to him, Rise thou, and eat. He beheld, and, lo, at his head was a loaf bacon under ashes, and a vessel of water. Therefore he ate, and drank, and slept again. And the angel of the Lord turned again the second time, and touched him. And he said to him, Rise thou, and eat. For a great way is to thee, and when he had risen, he ate, and drank. And he went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights, unto Horeb, the hill of God. And when he had come thither, he dwelled in a den, and lo, the word of the Lord was made to him, and said to him, Elijah, what doest thou here? And he answered, By fervent love, that is, of all the heart, I have loved fervently, for the Lord God of hosts, for the sons of Israel have forsaken the covenant of the Lord, they have destroyed thine altars, and killed with sword thy prophets, and I am left alone, and they seek my life, that they do it away. And he said to Elijah, Go thou out, and stand in the hill, before the Lord. And lo, the Lord passeth, and a great wind, and strong, turning upside down hills, and all breaking stones before the Lord. Not in the wind is the Lord. And after the wind is a stirring. Not in the stirring is the Lord. And after the stirring is a fire. Not in the fire is the Lord. And after the fire is an hissing of thin wind, or breathing softly, there is the Lord. And when Elijah had heard this, he covered his face with a mantle, and he went out, and stood in the door of the den. And a voice spake to him, and said, Elijah, what doest thou here? And he answered, With fervent love I have loved fervently, for the Lord God of hosts, for the sons of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, they have destroyed thine altars, and they have killed with sword thy prophets, and I am left alone, and they seek my life, that they do it away. And the Lord said to him, Go, and turn again into thy way, by the desert, into Damascus. And when thou shalt come thither, thou shalt anoint Hazel king upon Syria, and thou shalt anoint king upon Israel, Jehu, the son of Nimshi, and thou shalt anoint a prophet for thee, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, that is of Abelmehola. And it shall be, whoever shall flee the sword of Hazel, Jehu shall slay him, and whoever shall flee the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall slay him. And I shall leave to me in Israel seven thousand of men, of which the knees be not bowed before Baal, and each mouth that worship not him, and kissed not his hand. Therefore Elijah went forth from thence, and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, earring in twelve yokes of oxen, and he was one in the twelve yokes of oxen, earring. And when Elijah had come to him, Elijah casted his mantle upon him. And he ran anon after Elijah, when the oxen were left, and said, I pray thee, kiss I my father and my mother, and so I shall follow thee. And Elijah said to him, Go thou, and turn again, for I have done to thee that that was mine. Soothly he turned again from Elijah, and took twain oxen, and killed them, and with the plough of the oxen he seethed the flesh, and gave to the people, and they ate. And he rose, and went, and followed Elijah, and ministered to him.
Chapter 20 Forsooth Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered together all his host, and two and thirty kings with him, and horses, and chariots. And he went up against Samaria, and fought, and besieged it. And he sent messengers to Ahab, king of Israel, into the city, and said, Ben-Hadad saith these things, Thy silver and thy gold is mine, and thy wives, and thy best sons be mine. And the king of Israel answered, By thy word, my lord the king, I am thine, and all my things be thine. And the messengers turned again, and said, Ben-Hadad, that sentest to thee, saith these things, Thou shalt give to me thy silver, and thy gold, and thy wives, and thy sons. Therefore tomorrow, in this same hour, I shall send my servants to thee, and they shall seek thine house, and the house of thy servants, and they shall put in their hands, and take away all thing that shall please them. Forsooth the king of Israel called all the elder men of the land, and said, Perceive ye, and see, that he setteth treason to us. For he sent to me for my wives, and sons, and for silver, and gold, and I forsook not. And all the greater men in birth, and all the people said to him, Hear thou not, neither assent thou to him. And he answered to the messengers of Ben-Hadad, Say ye to my lord the king, I shall do all things, for which thou sentest in the beginning to me, thy servant, but I may not do this thing. And the messengers turned again, and told all things to him. Which sent again, and said, Gods do these things to me, and add these things too, if the dust of Samaria shall suffice to the fists of all the people that followeth me. And the king of Israel answered, and said, Say ye to him, A girded man, that is, he that goeth to battle, have not glory evenly as a man ungirded, that is, as he that hath the victory, and hath put off his armours. And it was done, when Ben-Hadad had heard this word, he drank, and also the kings, in shadowing places, and he said to his servants, Compass ye the city. And they compassed it, and lo, one prophet nigh to Ahab, king of Israel, and said to him, The Lord God saith these things, Certainly thou hast seen all this multitude full great, lo, I shall betake it into thine hand today, that thou know that I am the Lord. And Ahab said, By whom? And he said to Ahab, The Lord saith these things, by the squires, or the footmen, of the princes of provinces. And Ahab said, Who shall begin to fight? And the prophet said, Thou. Therefore he numbered the young men of the princes of provinces, and he found the number of two hundred and two and thirty, and after them he numbered the people, all the sons of Israel, seven thousand. And they went out in midday. Forsooth Ben-Hadad drank, and was drunken in his shadowing place, and two and thirty kings with him, that came to the help of him. And the young men of the princes of provinces went out in the first front. Therefore Ben-Hadad sent men, which told to him, and said, Men went out of Samaria. And he said, Whether they come for peace, take ye them quick. Whether to fight, take ye them quick. Therefore the young men of the princes of provinces went out, and the residue host followed. And each smote the man that came against him. And men of Syria fled, and Israel pursued them. Also Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, fled on an horse with his knights. Also the king of Israel went out, and smote horses and chariots, and he smote Syria with a full great vengeance. Forsooth a prophet nigh to the king of Israel, and said, Go thou, and be strengthened, and know, and see, what thou shalt do. For the king of Syria shall ascend against thee in the year following. Soothly the servants of the king of Syria said to him, The gods of hills be the gods of the sons of Israel, therefore they overcame us, but it is better that we fight against them in field places, and we shall get them there. Therefore do thou this word, or counsel. Remove thou all kings from thine host, and set thou princes for them, and restore thou the number of knights, that felled of thine, and horses after the former horses, and restore thou chariots, by the chariots which thou haddest before. And we shall fight against them in field places, and thou shalt see, that we shall get them. He believed to the counsel of them, and did so. Therefore after that the year had passed, Ben-Hadad numbered men of Syria, and he went up into Ephek, to fight against Israel. Forsooth the sons of Israel were numbered. And when meats were taken, they went forth even against and they, as two little flocks of goats, setted tents against men of Syria. 
for sooth men of Syria filled the land. And one prophet of God nighed, and said to the king of Israel, The Lord God saith these things, for men of Syria said, God of hills is the Lord of them, and he is not God of valleys, I shall give all this great multitude in thine hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And seven days these and they dressed battle arrays even against each other, and in the seventh day the battle was joined altogether, and the sons of Israel smote of the men of Syria in hundred thousand of footmen in one day. And they that left fled into the city of Aphek, and the wall fell down upon seven and twenty thousand of men that left. For sooth Ben-Hadad fled, and entered into the city, into a closet that was within a closet. And his servants said to him, We have heard that the kings of the house of Israel be merciful, therefore put we sackcloths in our loins, and cords in our heads, and go we out to the king of Israel, in hap he shall save our lives. They girded their loins with sackcloths, and put cords in their heads, and they came to the king of Israel, and said to him, Thy servant Ben-Hadad saith, I pray thee, let my soul live. And he said, If Ben-Hadad liveth yet, he is my brother. Which thing the men of Syria took for a gracious word, and they ravished hastily the word of his mouth, and said, Thy brother Ben-Hadad liveth. And Ahab said to them, Go ye, and bring ye him to me. Therefore Ben-Hadad went out to him, and he raised up Ben-Hadad into his chariot. Which Ben-Hadad said to him, I shall yield the cities which my father took from thy father, and make thou streets to thee in Damascus, as my father made in Samaria, and I shall be bound to peace, and I shall depart from thee. Therefore Ahab made bond of peace with him, and delivered him. Then a man of the sons of the prophets said to his fellow, In the word of the Lord, smite thou me. And he would not smite. To whom the prophet said, For thou wouldest not hear the voice of the Lord, lo! Thou shalt go from me, and a lion shall smite thee. And when he had gone a little from him, a lion found him, and slew him. But also the prophet found another man, and he said to that man, Smite thou me. And he smote him, and wounded him. Therefore the prophet went, and met the king in the way. And he changed with a cloth, that is, by wrapping of a cloth, his mouth and eyes. And when the king had passed, he cried to the king, and said, Thy servant went out to fight anon, and when one man had fled, a man brought him to me, and said, Keep thou this man, and if he escapeth, thy life shall be for his life, either thou shalt pay a talent of silver. Soothly while I was troubled, and turned me hither and thither, suddenly he appeared not. And the king of Israel said to him, This is thy doom that thou hast deemed. And anon he removed the cloth, either binding, from his face, and the king of Israel knew him, that he was of the prophets. The which said to the king, The Lord saith these things, for thou deliveredest from thine hand a man worthy death, thy life shall be for his life, and thy people for his people. Therefore the king of Israel turned again into his house, and despised to hear God's word, and came roth into Samaria. Chapter 21 for sooth after these words, in that time, the vinery of Naboth of Jezreel, that was in Jezreel, was beside the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Therefore Ahab spake to Naboth, and said, Give thou to me thy vineyard, that I make to me there of a garden of warts, for it is nigh to me, and nigh mine house, and I shall give to thee a better vinery for it. Either if thou guessest it more profitable to thee, I shall give thee the price of silver, as much as it is worth. To whom Naboth answered, The Lord be merciful to me, that I give not to thee the heritage of my fathers. Therefore Ahab came into his house, having indignation, and gnashing on the word which Naboth of Jezreel had spoken to him, and said, I shall not give to thee the heritage of my fathers. And Ahab casted down himself into his bed, and turned away his face to the wall, and ate not bread. And Jezebel, his wife, entered to him, and said to him, what is this thing, whereof thy soul is made sorry? And why eatest thou not bread? Which answered to her, I spake to Naboth of Jezreel, and I said to him, Give thy vineyard to me for money taken, either if it pleaseth thee, I shall give to thee a better vinery for it. And he said, I shall not give to thee my vineyard. Therefore Jezebel, his wife, said to him, Thou art of great authority, and thou governest well Israel. Rise thou, and eat bread, 
and be thou patient, either comforted. I shall give to thee the vinery of Naboth of Jezreel. Therefore she wrote letters in the name of Ahab, and sealed those with the ring of him. And she sent to the greater men in birth, and to the best men, that were in the city of Naboth, and dwelled with him. And this was the sentence of the letter. Preach ye fasting, and make ye Naboth to sit among the first men of the people. And send ye privily two men, the sons of Belial, against him, and say they false witnessing, Naboth hath blessed God, and the king, that is, hath cursed, and lead ye out him, and stone ye him, and die he so. Therefore his citizens, the greater men in birth, and the best men that dwelled with him in the city, did as Jezebel had commanded, and as it was written in the letters, which she had sent to them. They preached fasting, and made Naboth to sit among the first men of the people. And when two men, sons of the devil, were brought, they made him to sit against him, and they, that is, as men of the devil, said witnessing against him before all the multitude, Naboth blessed God, and the king, that is, Naboth hath cursed God, and the king. For which thing they led him without the city, and killed him with stones. And they sent to Jezebel, and said, Naboth is stoned, and is dead. Forsooth it was done, when Jezebel had heard Naboth stoned and dead, she spake to Ahab, Rise thou, take in possession the vinery of Naboth of Jezreel, which would not assent to thee, and give it for money taken. For Naboth liveth not, but is dead. And when Ahab had heard this, that is, Naboth to be dead, he rose, and went down into the vinery of Naboth of Jezreel, to have it into possession. Therefore the word of the Lord was made to Elijah of Tishbe, and said, Rise thou, go down into the coming of Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria, lo, he goeth down to the vinery of Naboth, that he have it in possession. And thou shalt speak to him, and say, The Lord saith these things, Thou hast slain Naboth, furthermore and thou hast taken his vineyard in possession. And after these things thou shalt add, In this place, wherein dogs lick the blood of Naboth, they shall lick also thy blood. And Ahab said to Elijah, Whether thou hast found me thine enemy? And Elijah said, I have found thee so, for thou art sold to the devil that thou shouldest do evil in the sight of the Lord. Therefore the Lord saith these things, Lo, I shall bring in upon thee evil, and I shall cut away thine hinder things, and I shall slay of Ahab a pisser to the wall, and the imprisoned, and the last in Israel. And I shall give thine house to be as the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, and as the house of Baasha, the son of Ahir. For thou didst evil to excite me to wrathfulness, and maddest Israel to do sin. But also the Lord spake of Jezebel, and said, Dogs shall eat Jezebel in the field of Jezreel. If Ahab shall die in the city, dogs shall eat him. Soothly if he shall die in the field, birds of the air shall eat him. Therefore none other was such as Ahab, that was sold to do evil in the sight of the Lord. For Jezebel his wife excited him thereto, and he was made abominable, insomuch that he followed the idols that Amorites made, which men the Lord wasted from the face of the sons of Israel. Therefore when Ahab had heard these words, he rent his cloth, and covered his flesh with an hair shirt, and he fasted, and slept in a sackcloth, and went with the head cast down. And the word of the Lord was made to Elijah of Tishbe, and said, Whether thou hast not seen Ahab made low before me? Therefore for he is made low for the cause of me, I shall not bring in evil in his days, but in the days of his son I shall bring in evil to his house. Chapter 22 Therefore three years passed without battle betwixt Syria and Israel. And in the third year Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, went down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said to his servants, Know ye not, that Ramoth of Gilead is ours, and we be negligent to take it from the hand of the king of Syria. And he said to Jehoshaphat, Whether thou shalt come with me to fight in Ramoth of Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, As I am, so and thou, my people and thy people be one, and my knights and thy knights be one. And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I pray thee, ask thou today the word of the Lord. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together prophets, about four hundred men, and he said to them, Ought I to go into Ramoth of Gilead to fight, either ought I to rest? Which answered, Go thou up, and the Lord shall give it in the hand of the king. 
Forsooth Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here any prophet of the Lord, that we ask by him? And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, One man, Micaiah, the son of Imlah, is left, by whom we may ask the Lord. But I hate him, for he prophesieth not good to me, but evil. To whom Jehoshaphat said, King, speak thou not so. Therefore the king of Israel called some chamberlain, and said to him, Haste thou to bring Micaiah, son of Imlah. Forsooth the king of Israel, and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat, each in his throne, clothed with king's ornament, in the large house beside the door, or wicket, of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied in the sight of them. Also Zedekiah, the son of Chenana, made to himself horns of iron, and said, The Lord God saith these things, with these thou shalt scatter Syria, till thou do away it. And all prophets prophesied in like manner, and said, Ascend thou into Ramoth of Gilead, and go thou with prosperity, and the Lord shall betake thine enemies in the hand of the king. Soothly the messenger, that went to call Micaiah, spake to him, and said, Lo! The words of the prophets with one mouth preach goods to the king. Therefore thy word be like them, and speak thou goods. To whom Micaiah said, The Lord liveth, for whatever thing the Lord shall say to me, I shall speak this. Therefore he came to the king. And the king said to him, Micaiah, ought we go into Ramoth of Gilead to fight, either cease? To which king he answered, Ascend thou, and go in prosperity, and the Lord shall betake it into the hand of the king. Forsooth the king said to him, Again and again I conjure thee, that thou speak not to me, no but that that is sooth in the name of the Lord. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered in the hills, as sheep not having a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no Lord, each man turn again into his house in peace. Therefore the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Whether I said not to thee, that he prophesieth not good to me, but ever evil. Soothly that Micaiah added, and said, Therefore hear thou the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and I saw all the host of heaven standing nigh him, on the right side and on the left side. And the Lord said, Who shall deceive Ahab, king of Israel, that he ascend, and fall in Ramoth of Gilead? And one said such words, and another in another manner. Soothly a spirit went out, and went before the Lord, and said, I shall deceive him. To whom the Lord spake, in what thing? And he said, I shall go out, and I shall be a spirit of leasing in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt deceive, and shalt have the mastery, go thou out, and do so. Now therefore, lo, the Lord gave a spirit of leasing in the mouth of all prophets that be here, and the Lord spake evil against thee. Forsooth Zedekiah, son of Chenana, nighed, and smote Micaiah on the cheek, and said, Whether the Spirit of the Lord forsook me, and spake to thee. And Micaiah said, Thou shalt see in that day, when thou shalt go into a closet within closet, that thou be hid. And the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah, and dwell he at Ammon, prince of the city, and at Josh, the son of Amalek. And say ye to them, The king saith these things, Send ye this man into prison, and sustain ye him with bread of tribulation, and with water of anguish, till I turn again in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou shalt turn again in peace, the Lord spake not in me. And he said, Hear ye, all peoples. Therefore the king of Israel ascended, and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, into Ramoth of Gilead. Therefore the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Take thou armors, and enter thou into battle, and be thou clothed in thy clothes, that is, in noble signs of the king. Certainly the king of Israel changed his clothing, and entered into battle. Soothly the king of Syria had commanded to two and thirty princes of chariots, and said, Ye shall not fight against any man less, either more, but against the king of Israel only. Therefore when the princes of chariots had seen Jehoshaphat, they supposed that he was king of Israel, and by fierceness made, they fought against him. And Jehoshaphat cried, calling God's help, and declaring his banner. And the princes of chariots understood, that it was not the king of Israel, and they ceased from him. Soothly some man bent a bow, and directed an arrow into uncertain, and by hap he smote the king of Israel betwixt the lung and the stomach. 
And the king said to his charioteer, Turn thine hand, and cast me out of the host, for I am wounded grievously. Therefore battle was joined in that day, and the king of Israel stood in his chariot against men of Syria, and he was dead at eventide. For sooth the blood of the wound floated down into the bottom of the chariot. And a crier sounded in all the host, before that the sun went down, and said, Each man turn again into his city, and into his land. For sooth the king was dead, and was born into Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. And they washed his chariot in the cistern of Samaria, and dogs licked his blood, and they washed the armors, by the word of the Lord which he had spoken. Soothly the residue of words of Ahab, and all things which he did, and the house of ivory which he builded, and of all cities which he builded, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Israel. Therefore Ahab slept with his fathers, and Ahaziah, his son, reigned for him. For sooth Jehoshaphat, son of Asa, began to reign on Judah in the fourth year of Ahab, king of Israel. Jehoshaphat was of five and thirty years, when he began to reign, and he reigned five and twenty years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Azabar, daughter of Shili. And he went in all the way of Asa, his father, and bowed not from it. And he did that, that was rightful in the sight of the Lord. Nevertheless he did not away high things, for yet the people made sacrifice, and burnt incense, in high places. And Jehoshaphat had peace with the king of Israel. Soothly the residue of words of Jehoshaphat, and the works and battles, which he did, whether these be not written in the book of words of days of the kings of Judah. But also he took away from the land the relics of men turned into women's conditions, that left in the days of Asa, his father. Neither a king was ordained then in Edom. For sooth king Jehoshaphat made ships in the sea, that should sail into Ophir for gold, and those might not go, for they were broken in Eziongeber. Then Ahaziah, son of Ahab, said to Jehoshaphat, My servants go with thine in ships. And Jehoshaphat would not. And Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers, and was buried with them in the city of David, his father, and Jehoram, his son, reigned for him. For sooth Ahaziah, son of Ahab, began to reign on Israel, in Samaria, in the seventeenth year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and Ahaziah reigned on Israel two years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went in the way of his father, and of his mother, and in the way of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, that made Israel to do sin. And he served Baal, and worshipped him, and wrathed the Lord God of Israel, by all things which his father had done.